All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on a Saturday night edition of the Hot Tag Podcast. This is the 26th episode, believe it or not. I am Shaheen and my co-host, Boxman. Go ahead, sir. Oh, I lost you already at the beginning. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Say it again. Now nah, I'm just I passed it off to you. Go ahead and introduce yourself, my man. Oh, I am Box. How he are you? Boxman. I am Boxman. That is what they call me for some reason. Yeah, we might have to get into that one day. Explain explain why they call you Boxman. Oh, it's very simple. I can explain it in three words. Okay. I sell boxes. Oh. All right, that's uh, self-explanatory, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we don't – I would get into it another night, but I'll uh, explain it oh, next. Yeah, we just got into it right now. Yeah. Let's see, look at that. No no problem. <laughs> no problem at all. Um, we already discussed Raw this week. Um, unfortunately, I haven't watched Lucha Underground, so we're going to discuss TNA, some news, some other good stuff going on. Um yeah, this is going to be kind of a surprise, just popping up as a present, as a little surprise in your uh, subscription feed, so check it out. I'm guessing you're checking it out right now if you hear this, right? So, Boxman, how did you like TNA? I liked TNA. I actually thought it was a good show. Um, I mean, yeah, there were some nitpicky things that they need to change, but I guess, you know, let's wait. Maybe they'll change it, but... I thought all in all it was a pretty damn good show. Like I, I you know, I was, I was telling you, you know, before we went live, that you know, it looks like a lot of people went into it wanting to hate it, so nitpick the shit out of it. But I don't know. What did you think? Well, let me ask you one more question. Off oh. the bat, I, I I know it was a good show and everything, but do you feel any different about TNA after after watching this? Did it give you a different feeling, a different vibe? Well, maybe a little. Well, I don't know. Probably not, but I don't know. I'm not that – I don't know why I'm just less critical of TNA. I don't know. I, it's just – I don't know. They just – But are you are you legitimately excited for, for TNA every week? <sighs> I'm sure, you're but excited for it. Do what? Do you see yourself be, being excited for TNA to watch TNA Impact on Destination America every, every week? Yeah, I do. I, I, I usually want to watch it. When it yeah, I, I do. So that's that's the thing with me. Um, I really enjoyed the show. I thought it was definitely one of their better shows. Um, I guess we'll get more more in detail and depth in a, in a little bit, but just overall, I thought I thought it was a great show, man. I mean, uh, first impression, I liked it. I like the more uh, gritty feel to it, the more independent look to it. Um, a lot of people were bitching about the the lighting and all that stuff, man. I I don't care about that stuff. I don't know about you. I can't speak for you, but me. I mean, I like production value and everything, but I'd rather have good wrestling than like good lighting and and all that stuff. So I don't know. I think you're right. I mean, a lot of people were nitpicking uh, and. Overall, I, I liked it, but I can't go ahead and say that uh, I'm any more excited about TNA than I was before when they were on Spike. Um, I think, you know, they're they're going towards a better direction. Um, I guess I, I I can hopefully see better days for TNA, but um, ever since they've been going to the Manhattan Center, they've had better shows. But I can't say I'm I'm, I'm any more excited than I was previously. Huh. Which is weird. You I would get think it'd be out, or you, you would you would think it'd be different, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess I don't know. I mean, there. I mean, there. There's weeks where I'm like, oh, great, TNA is on. Then there's weeks I'm like, fucking, thank God, TNA is on. You know what? Sometimes it has to do with how good or or shitty Raw was. Like this week, I was really wanting to watch TNA. Well, it's probably because it was on a, you know, it was a debut on a new network. It was live. I mean, well, it was kind of live. What do you mean? I thought it was live. Did you see, did you see the end? This was uh, recorded live on a tape delay. No, I did not. 
Yeah, there was a little bit of delay there. And, um, well, they had to. I guess they had a lot of production problems. Like, the, the, the whole production board kept dying on them. Wow. Well, that's that's not good. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they got through it, but... I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I'm not. I don't have a problem with going on a 15 minute delay or you know, a couple hour delay or whatever it is. But I don't know, man. I'm I'm usually a big fan of live live shows. It gives you a different uh, feel to the show. So yeah. I enjoyed it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I can't say I didn't enjoy almost every match. I think I did actually enjoy every match. So really good stuff, man. I'm excited for TNA, but uh, I can't say I'm any more excited than I was previously. But nonetheless, I'm 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 still excited. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to try and keep up with it because I know the last couple of months I failed to do so, and that's simply due to the fact that I just didn't have the time. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to you know provide the time for TNA and help Destination America gain at least one more viewer. So. Yeah, Destination. You're welcome, Destination America. Yeah, Destination America. America. Great minds think alike. Yeah. America. America. But um, I guess I guess let's you know go ahead and uh, discuss the show in, in in detail. Um, the beginning, man. I do you remember how you said uh they're gonna have like a like a reality show kind of feel to it? Yeah. Um, I think that's gonna be in weeks to come when they get more cameras in there and can probably do more in post when they're not live. Uh, yeah, I but you definitely got that vibe just just from the video package. For the for the intro, you know. Yeah, a little bit of it, I definitely did. Yeah, <clears throat> the wrestlers on, on the tour bus, and you know, showing the locker room and all that stuff. Showing Tyron Terrell like in the shower. God, that was great. Right. That was beautiful. That was fucking wonderful. Uh, you couldn't see much. Still, just damn, she still looks good. Anyway, um. Yeah, I guess we can actually get into the show. And like you, you, you just actually started to with uh, the beginning of it. There was a huge brawl, which I kind of enjoyed. Um, That's my favorite part of the show. I, I, honestly, that was the, my favorite thing about TNA, probably, probably like ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. I, I really liked it. I don't know, man. I thought it was really different, and I liked how you know there was wrestlers literally coming from every exit, you know, just pouring out to the arena. Just brawling yeah. everywhere. It was, it was a great way to debut the show. Um, it was it was awesome, man. I can't. I honestly, I love that more than anything in, in TNA in, in a long time, if not ever. Yeah, a little bit of action right off the bat. Not even didn't even give you a chance to breathe. Barely. They did the opening and went right into. Uh, you know, they had a little bus ride, showed everybody outside, and then boom, boom. Here we are. Boom. Action. It started off. Uh, and then Kurt Angle comes out and uh, starts you know, going into how he's uh, <clears throat> every TNA champion will defend their title tonight. And uh, the main event, get ready for it. It's Bobby Roode versus Bobby Lashley. Yes, sir. Now, are you excited about uh, Kurt Angle staying with TNA or, or would you prefer if he went uh, on, on like a part-time schedule with the WWE. I wouldn't mind seeing Kurt end his career in WWE, obviously. Uh, it's probably where he deserves to, but TNA probably needs him right now, and I think it might be a good thing for him to be there. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, I certainly don't have a problem with him being on a part-time schedule with TNA now. I mean, he's, he's going to be there as far as being an on-screen character, but... From my understanding, is he's going to be limited as far as uh, like end ring appearances. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's good for him, man. I don't I don't want to see the guy get hurt. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't either. He's he's a uh, he should be. Uh, meanwhile, he's uh, announces he's reinstated as a wrestler. And while MVP is doing this, how fucking annoying was the censoring and the they were killing the audio. I have no clue what MVP said because. The crowd was chanting, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Is, is, is Destination, is Destination America, is like, are, are they really anal about like profanity, or do you think this would have happened with uh, Spike? 
Oh, I think it probably would have happened with Spike too, but I definitely think that they probably could have let more slide. I mean, they're a pretty high tier cable station. Um, although I guess the time of day might have prevented them from doing that. You know, it wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't that ten o'clock Eastern hour. So yeah. I don't know, but um, they need to uh, hopefully figure out a way to fix that because. It's happened more than once but yeah because this crowd was uh rowdy <laughs> yeah this is new york city so yeah this crowd was uh definitely uh rowdy but uh after all that after you find after they finally got into it angle announces he is no longer in charge he is a wrestler makes a street fight and i kind of like this they started street fighting in their street clothes Wow. I like how he says he's, he's he's no longer in charge, but he makes a match. You know, but he also, if you listen, he said right after I make this announcement tonight, I am done. Yeah, but you, you know, I don't, dude. I don't. I can't. I can't pay attention to wrestling like I used to. So you're gonna have to excuse me if I uh, slip I out. Did say it. <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. Thank you, sir. But he did. Oh God damn. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm still sick, man. Everyone in my house is sick. Excuse me. Okay, man. But, um, you know, he did say it, so it kind of made sense, but whatever. Who cares? Anyway, I thought it was pretty damn good. I thought it was a good match, MVP and Angle. Yeah, I thought I thought it was a really good match. Um, I would I would have really liked to see this match when uh, both guys were in their prime. You know, like uh, like two thousand and I don't know seven six. Did they ever wrestle in, in in the WWE? I don't know. I'm kind of wondering when MVP came in because that might have been right when Kurt was going out. Kurt's been with TNA what ten years now? Something like that. Yeah. So when did MVP come into WWE? Do you have any clue? I have no clue because uh, I wasn't I wasn't watching. During that era, so uh, so since we back, I think it was around 06, though. I think it might have been 06, 07. You're, I think you're right. When did MVP debut in the dub? In the motherfucking dub. In ring debut, SmackDown. 2006. Yep. Yeah. So Spitting facts once again. There you go. So I doubt him and Kurt Angle uh, ever met because if Kurt was probably gone at this time. Yeah. That would have so, that would have definitely been a good match though uh, in their prime. I mean, this was a good match, but uh, yeah. I just I I hate like wrestlers wrestling in their street clothes. As, uh, you know, if it, if it's like a no DQ street fight, that's fine. But like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just not a fan of like guys in suits wrestling. Yeah, if it's a street fight, I mean, you know, I'd rather them not go out there in their wrestling gear and wrestling. Right. You know, I'd rather see that. But um, Angle left in 2006 too, so I guess it's possible they had a quick match. But I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be cool. That would but, be. Uh, uh, who knows? So, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I I appreciated the fact that they just started wrestling in their street clothes. Yeah, it was good stuff, man. I definitely enjoyed it. I just um like I said, I just hope Angle you know takes care of himself. I hope he doesn't do moon salts or t top of the fucking cage. I mean, the guy, you know, he's he's he's, he's an elderly guy. I mean, he's not seventy, but. As far as wrestling age, you know, he's he's, he's kind of up there. He's in his 40s, so you got to watch out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, he definitely needs to watch out. Yeah, no more uh, no more moonsaults off the cage. We've seen it. We don't need to see it anymore, Kurt. We love you for it. Stop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially, wasn't it on, on, like, Impact? It wasn't even on a pay-per-view or anything. It was on one of those special – it was on a lockdown, one of those special shows. Yeah, that's that's basically impact. That. Yeah, you're right. I know. Make people pay for it. If you're gonna do it, at least, you know, 
Yeah. Do it on a, on a pay-per-view or something that people paid for. Yeah, at least something. So, yeah, whatever. But, um, yeah, he needs to quit doing that shit. But uh, then there was a little backstage segment with MVP and Kenny King. Who gives a shit? Um, and then EC3 and Tyrus are backstage. Yeah. I'm, I'm liking the beard. I, I think the beard is a little weird on him, but uh, I'm digging oh, it, man. I like that EC3 called every called the crowd a bunch of fatties who have already broken their New Year's re New Year's resolutions. <laughs> EC3 is gold, man. He's, he, you know, I've been saying it for a long time. He's he's growing yep. on me, and he's, he's he's finally there, man. I'm I'm a fan. I, I I really never expected anyone to be to go to TNA and like show what they could have done in WWE, but EC3 yeah. has done. EC3 has definitely shown he could have been a big value over there. So they had a top heel with him, and they didn't even see it. Man, he he could have been the WWE champion for all we know. He he, he has charisma. Yeah, he's he he is he 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 definitely should have been a top heel in WWE. Um, yeah, yeah, they never saw it though. But he's definitely going to be a top heel here. Um, he hasn't even been there. But I can I can understand why they didn't see it because you know, first impression, not even first impression. For the first couple of months, I hated this guy. I mean, not not hated him as as in he was doing his job correctly and he was being a good heel as in. You know that X Pac, he just you know get the fuck out. Well, the Miz has uh, this kind of heat, but yeah, but the Miz sucks though. Yeah, but the Miz, every now and then he grows on me. I don't he know. Get, oh, dude, he doesn't every get now and then. He gets that. He gets that. I don't give a fuck about you. Just I, I never want to see you on my television screen again. Type of heat. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, every time I see him on TV, I'd love to just give him a fucking good shot to the nuts, just fucking a good swift kick. But I don't know. Yeah, but that's that's kind of being like a good heel, though. That's that's the reaction you want to get. That's not the reaction I, you know, he gets from me. With me, it's just you know, I I automatically just turn my phone on. See, I, I always thought that that Derek, when he was Derek Bateman in WWE, not EC3. I always thought he was just kind of just a goofy looking dude who they were trying to make a comedy guy, and it didn't fit him. So it made you know he was. I remember watching NXT. He was in this whole Johnny Curtis Caitlin storyline where it was just stupid. It was just horrible. I mean, it was great seeing Caitlin, but. Yeah, I bet it was. Damn, yeah, she's... unfortunately, I don't, I don't remember any of this. Well, I was. That, that's when NXT was still, you know, kind of, you know, you could still watch it places, but. I mean, you can watch it now, man. <laughs> you well, can watch it. You can. Yeah, you can watch you can it. Access to it easier than ever. That's right. I forget, but um, yeah, but I I like this little thing here, but um. I don't know. Then, of course, we saw Mike Tanay talking about their he new did. show, Unlocked. And uh, he did a little uh, thing. Where how James many shows did they have? They have three? They're going to have three shows at, by the end of this month. So which one is Unlocked? Is that the best of? Or is it the recap that's, show? Yeah, that's going to be the Unlocked with the kind of... It's going to be a recap with... With things with uh, never before seen footage, also. Cool. So yeah, maybe maybe, uh, maybe I'll check it out. I'll DVR it. It won't hurt. But um, and then they actually did a thing with James Storm explaining why he had to form the revolution. Thank God, because they never really explained why he went dark like this. Yeah, it, I mean, clearly it's it's. Somewhat of a of a Bray Wyatt, you know, Wyatt family ripoff in, in a way. I mean, not really, but kind of, since it's in the same time frame. See, I don't. But see, uh, I I like it, man. I don't. Well, the see whole cult me. leader, you know, he's got people hypnotized and brain, right, but, brainwashed, and where's? You know. But he recruited these guys. He beat the shit out of them until they. He basically, you know, it showed him beating them until they finally conformed to his thinking. 
I mean, he, you know, I, I, I never saw Bray recruit anybody. They just kind of showed up as the family. He's cutting yeah, but, co- yeah. promos. I mean, for all we know, Bray did the same thing. We don't really know the background story. The Wyatt family just kind of died out. And Bray has no cult anymore. Well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm talking about Bray when he used to have the, the, the family. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, they're very similar. I think James Storm is a lot better. I, I think his storyline is better. That's just me. Call me crazy. Yeah. Call me crazy. Yeah. I'm good with it. I'll I'll call you crazy. Go ahead. I can handle. I mean, it. I, I don't I don't think Wyatt is great. When they first debuted, I thought it was going to be the greatest thing ever because it had so much potential. I mean, after seeing the kids come out and the choir and all that stuff, then it's like, oh god. And you know, certainly the hologram and the the you know TV oh. spots and all that stuff. And none of that stuff helps. So I don't know, dude. Hologram is so great. Um, no. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. It was a joke. Yeah, I know. Take it easy. Relax. I know. Relax. It's, sar- it's, it's sarcasm. Yeah, yeah, just relax. I was just kidding. But I'm, uh, as, I'm as relaxed as you can get, man. I'm laid back and a lazy boy. Yeah, <laughs> nice. That's, that's about as relaxed as you can get. That is about as relaxed as you can get. Um... Uh, that's it, man. And then we get the next match, which is James Storm and Abyss versus the Wolves and their new scratch marks, which I weren't sure if they were tattoos or body decals. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know. It, it certainly looked cool. I liked it. I hope they keep going it. I mean, I don't know, man. I, it wouldn't be weird if it was a tattoo since, you know, it's it's a big part of their... It's, it's, it's a... Big part of their life, and um, that's pretty much why people get tattoos to you know represent a part of their life. Uh, it's almost like a timeline. Yeah, so. those would be some. I don't know. Just having matching tattoos with another guy is kind of creepy to me. Yeah, it's kind of gay, but. I mean, <laughs> All right, there you I go. Know, they're, they're, they're an attack. Yeah, I mean they're an attack team, so. That's yeah, a little more creepy. Yeah. You have the same tattoos. Isn't that awesome? No. Are you guys fucking yeah. do? <laughs> now I'm going to have to retract my steps. They're probably not tattoos. I got a feeling they're body decals, but. Did you I know, know. Uh, Davey, Davey Richards is a certified EMT? Mm hmm. That's crazy. Why is he wrestling? Uh, I'm not sure. He actually the schedule is probably better. Well, that is true. It is TNA. Those EMTs work some sick schedules, man. Yeah, yeah. My mom's uh, she's gonna be a nurse in a year, so. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. It's um, yeah. They work some crazy stuff, man. But uh, I don't know. That was pretty much. I mean, but the uh, I don't know. It was a good match, though. The Wolves did this little thing where they did like four suicide dives right out the ring, which was pretty cool. Yeah, um, the Wolves they've they've been doing a lot of independence, so yeah. I don't I don't even know uh I don't even know how like are they gonna continue to do this with TNA? Are they gonna be able to make other bookings with the uh, independence, or was that just until they figure out if they have a deal or not? I don't know, but they do have a deal because they did put one of those little... If you go on TNA's website, you can see that the the Wolves did sign. So I don't know if they're still going to. I would think that as long as they're not on another television show, they could probably still do indies. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't go on TNA.com, so can't tell you. Oh, okay. What about their Facebook page? I... No. Okay. All right. I Man. just I occasionally go to my DVR section and check it out. Man, look at this guy. He's got a man. You're you you're, you're a podcast journalist now, man. You gotta. Hey, man. We promised to speak the truth. I can't lie. I did say uh, I watched it. I certainly thought it was a great show, but. All right. All right. I got you. I got I, you. I can't get invested to it. I can't get invested in it. The guy, like I would yeah. like to. 
Like, even even with Lucha Underground, you know, I, I love it. I haven't watched a bad match on there really yet. But sometimes I slip out and I just I just can't watch it. I mean, the only thing that I uh, pretty much I'm programmed to watch like a robot is, is Monday Night Raw, which is probably the shittiest one out of all of them. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't even know why I do it, but... Uh, for punishment, sir. Yeah. As am I, as I watch it. WWE has us programmed. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's got its good, it's got its bad, whatever. But lately it's had a lot more bad than good. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah! Yeah, but uh, this did turn out to be a pretty good match, actually. I enjoyed it. Um... The Wolves yeah, did not the Wolves win. Awesome. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Um, Hardy's ended up getting involved. Uh, accidentally ended up... Uh, Hard and Jeff Hardy accidentally hit Eddie Edwards with... What did he hit him with? I don't oh, know. James, I know they're, they're uh, next week. James Storm's bull rope had the uh, cowbell on, the, on, the, on it. So that's what he nailed him with. And uh, accidentally hit uh, Eddie Edwards and... Uh, then he got the last call super kick from Storm. Storm wins. James Storm and Abyss retain the tag team championships. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Next week, it's, it's going to be the Wolves against the Hardys as well. So that's that's going to be good stuff. Yeah, I think so. Oh. And I think that's the match they got from their time on Spike when they did that little tag t- uh, tournament tag team thing. Yeah, with the Dudleys. Um, speaking of the speaking of the Dudleys, this this doesn't pertain to TNA, but since uh, we kind of mentioned the Dudleys, do you see Bully Ray, Bubble Ray, whatever you want to call him, do you see him coming in as a as a surprise entrance at at the Rumble? Ooh, no, no. I mean that's that's certainly the rumor that's been going around, and I can I can see it, man. I mean I I don't know. I would like to see it, I should say. Um, I yeah, think... Bringing back a 40... What is he, 43? Yeah, something like that. I don't... Uh, I, maybe just for the Rumble I could see it, but... Maybe. It's possible. I mean, just for the Rumble I could see it happening, but... Um, probably not. Yeah. Could I see it happening? Maybe. Maybe. Will I, do I think it'll happen? No. Well, if he's if he's not signing with the WWE, what is he doing? Banging you velvet. Think, you would think he'd go go with TNA if he's not if he's not you know interested in in, in by the WWE. Dude, he's just sitting back, banging velvet sky. What are you gonna do? He's falling back. Relax. That's, do what? He's just relaxing. Dude, that's all I would do. I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to take a year off and just bang Velvet Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Every single minute of the day. Every time she's home, just uh, just take, just take, don't even walk around with clothes on. I guarantee that's what I would do. But anyway, that, that that's just me, you know. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I have to apologize in advance. I got a toothache, so I took some painkiller, so if I start slurring. Oh. Is- yeah, you need you need something to drink, man. You need something to drink. You need some alcohol with them painkillers. <laughs> oh no, man! What do you think? What do you think this is? Uh, what do you think I'm an actual wrestler? I don't know, man. That's that's what I do. You you take them right right Didn't when you, you die. You take them when you get hungry. <laughs> that's how people die, man. And you that's take, how I die. Then you have a beer. Awesome, dude. Oh, well, you're talking beer. I'm thinking like, oh no, hard liquor. Well, I am drinking Miller Fortune, which is six point nine percent. Pretty strong. Yeah. Pretty good but, though. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't even really drink. So. Well, you should start. I don't like pills either, but. Yeah. Yeah. I took. I took my time off drinking. I'm back. Um. I'm back. And better than ever. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. Oh, God. Never. I need I him sh- back, man. Bring him, bring, the, bring him back. 
Bring him back. I would love it. I'd love to. I'd love to hear that song on um on WWE. Dude, he should be a part of the authority. If they're gonna have these guys run the fucking show again and Ooh. restart this whole thing, at least add somebody interesting. I mean, he's a good mouthpiece. Put him in there. That would be dirty. Yeah. Oh, dude, Vince, you were the one that made it that we were gonna be out of power. If you now we're gonna get you back and Bischoff's music plays. Yep. Dude, do you remember the uh do you remember the idea that, that kept well remember the thing that Kevin Redler brought up? He 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 said, uh, what do you think about NWO returning and doing an NWO invasion in the in the WWE and we came up with the idea about John Cena, Hulk Hogan and, and, and Triple H forming a new NWO. Um, that idea. That was well, awesome. All right, I thought of that. Whatever, man. I'm, I'm giving all you. I'm giving you all that credit, man. Just take all it right. all. Take it. Take it. Thank you, sir. Anyway, <laughs> add Eric Bischoff to that, man. It's, it's it's gold, man. I don't I don't know why they don't do stuff like this. It's that would that really I never even, that would be gold. I mean, for God's sake, man, Bischoff. He can't be that expensive. He's doing a fucking Dave and Buster's meet, meet and greet. With Rob Feinstein at, 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 during the Rumble weekend, you know what I mean? You know, clearly he's not busy. What? No, they're doing a um. Him and Bruce Pritchard are doing a debate with Chris Jericho. Media. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. A couple of people wanted Which, to go to that. I, I'm I'm probably not going to go to that. Yeah, well, I I'd, I'd love to go. I think it would be awesome to hear. I mean, I listened to a little bit of it on Chris Jericho's podcast. And made me want to go. You think I should go? Up to you, man. I mean, is it expensive, or you just go in and there it is? No, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not really worried about that. I mean, I'm sure the tickets aren't probably that crazy. It's probably like twenty bucks or something. Probably twenty five, thirty bucks. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I mean, to hear those two sit there and talk about probably the best time ever in wrestling. Yeah, but I'm, I've just is my it, is brain. It? My brain has been flooded. With the Attitude Era and, and and the Monday Night Wars recently, oh, so yeah. like, is it um is is it, I mean is it close to you? I mean I'm going to the Rumble and it's right before the Rumble and it's right down the street, so you know. Oh, so it's it's close to there. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it's right down the street from the from the Wells Fargo Center from from oh, my. Man. I don't know, man. I mean, if if you got time, I would I would just, I, I'd check it out. Yeah, Chikara is also doing a show that day, and uh, Ring of Honor is doing a show at the ECW Arena the night before on, on that Saturday. Um, Jim Ross is coming to town, doing like a Q and A. Um, Jim Ross is coming to town. Yeah, there you go. I don't know why, I don't know where that came from. I don't know either. You would know better than I do, but uh. Nope, I yeah. wouldn't. <laughs> uh, I guess you wouldn't. Nope. But, um, yeah, dude, I don't know, man. It's, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, how many weeks is it from, from now? Two weeks? Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. So not next week and the, the weekend after that. No, it'll should, be a uh, week from tomorrow, won't it? Well, isn't it? No, the it's be two weeks from, from, from tomorrow. That's right. The 19th is the show here. The That's going to be like an old school type show, and I still... Don't know if I'm gonna go. Oh, you better get your ass out there. Ah, Who's gonna man. be on there? Well, remember they were in that, they were advertising Kevin Nash. And by the way, I I, I did want to mention the next week he was off that advertisement. Um, they're still oh, announcing. Oh, you're talking about Raw. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm thinking you're talking about some kind of independent show doing old school thing. No, there's nothing here like that, man. There's not. There's no fucking good wrestling here anymore, dude. I'm so sad. I, I'm. I mean, that's one reason I want to go back to Florida. I know there's more more wrestling in Florida than there is here, right? Right. You know. So. Yeah, my mom is in Austin right now. My whole family's in Austin right now. Actually. That's a few hours from me. Yeah. I'll be up there in a couple of years. So. Nice. I'll stop by. We can have a live hot tag. I I might be in Florida by then. Oh shit! <laughs> In that case, then nah. We'll, 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 there you go. Well, I'm, I'm not going to be living up there. I'll just probably just visit them every now and then. Hey, you can come on down to Florida for the winters. Yeah, there you go, man. Yeah, once I, uh, once I, uh, fucking, I don't know, 
somehow get, get situated with my dogs, I'll start getting around. There you go. I mean, really, I can do what I do from anywhere. So, right. I mean, I don't need an office. All I need is a computer, a phone, and yeah. So, I don't know, but uh, we'll see what goes on. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to be back in Florida. So, because I can't stand this shit here, man. It's about to fucking ice tonight. It's supposed to be ice when I leave here tonight. Isn't that great? Man, I thought Texas was hot. Texas gets hot as shit in the summer, but when it gets fucking cold here, it gets cold. Yeah, I mean, we're, dude, we're only 13 hours from Colorado. Yeah. I mean, not that I've – well, yeah, I've looked. It's we're only 13 hours from Colorado. I've thought about taking a road trip a couple times. Yeah, I bet you have, man. I bet yeah. you have. No, can you literally just walk around Colorado smoking weed? I don't know about that. Um, I, I, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I, I've never really looked that up. I know you can get it. I don't know if you can just like walk around, you know, hitting a pipe, smoking a joint. I would think not. I would think you still have to be respectful about it. But right. maybe you can sit there and pass a blunt while you're walking down the street. Yeah, I would be badass. But um, I don't know. How, um, how, how many degrees is it in in uh Texas right now? Right now, give me a second. I will pull up my weather bug. My weather bug says it is it is thirty two degrees. It's thirty two degrees. Mm hmm. Dude, it's fucking twelve degrees here. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What's the low gonna be here? Yeah, it's gonna get. Uh, it's supposed to be in the. It's supposed to stay about this temperature all night tonight. Tomorrow. Yeah, man. You guys, you guys are lucky, man. I live in the Northeast, dude. It's twelve I degrees. I know that's your fault. But it's rainy. <laughs> it's nasty. It's rainy. It's it's quiet. I mean, there hasn't been a bit of sun all day. I hate that shit. Man, give me give me thirty six degrees all day, man. Twelve yeah. degrees is, uh. Well, come on to Texas. Yeah, I gotta I gotta finish school. This is my last year, so. Yeah, I, I mean, let's see where 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 I'm from down in Florida. Let's see what could it be down there. It would be let's see, from the Boca Raton area. So let's see. I'll hit uh, here. Let's go Deerfield, where I'm from anyway. Up oh, 72 degrees right now in Florida. Man, son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, now you see why I want to go back to Florida. <laughs> but how hot does it get during the summer, though? That's like. Well, it's not that bad. It's it, it's not as bad. I'll tell you the truth. It's more. It's. It gets so hot here. You walk outside, it damn near takes your breath. That ocean breeze down there is a huge help. It is not that bad. Yeah, so it rains and gets humid for at the end of the day, but who gives a shit? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I just I don't know if I would find any jobs in Florida. That's the main thing. Oh yeah. There's work. Yeah. There's work everywhere. Well, I mean, in my in my department, not just like. Well, you're gonna be able to do what you. I mean, you're gonna be able to do what you do from anywhere too. Right, right. Yeah. But I just I have to be like in a metropolitan city with like a lot of different mm -hmm. you know advertisement companies and shit like that, like New York, L. A. You know, Philly, Miami. Yeah, yeah, probably Miami. Forty where I lived was literally forty minutes from Miami. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So Miami's pretty big, man. And it, uh, I don't know. I'll be honest. I haven't been down there in about three years, but um, I got to go back in April. So I don't know what we're gonna do in April. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah, it would only be for one show, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's all good, man. Um, we'll can you go take back. over? Can you take over for like two minutes? I just have to go get a drink. I'm getting like heavy cotton mouth from this fucking pill. Hold on. Don't leave me yet. There you are. You're back. I am back. All right. Yeah, well, well, what you got to do? All right, man. Just take over and I'll come back in a few minutes. I'll just get back to the wrestling then.
All right, wrestling. Get back to the wrestling. Here I go. All right. MVP comes down. Uh, we go back to the uh, TNA. We're in the backstage segment. MVP tells Lashley, there is no Lashley without me. And then uh, Lashley shoves MVP against the wall. Kenny King's back there freaking out like usual. And uh, let's see what happened. Now, Lashley said this is all about him getting his title back, blah, blah. This is where it gets fun. EC3 comes out to the ring, and he calls out Rockstar Spud, and Spud comes you know, stammering out, staggering, as uh, Tyrus throws him basically out to the ring. Um, Borash starts interjecting. He ex actually ends up slapping EC3, um, and next thing you know, poor Jeremy Borash. As bad as he looked, this poor guy, I mean, he looked like he had just got off a 10-day cocaine and alcohol bender. He gets his fucking head shaved. This poor guy gets his head shaved. And I don't mean, well, let's, you know, shave it down to a five. They took this guy's head down to nothing. Um, pretty funny stuff. But... Uh, J J B certainly took one for the team there, so uh, props to him. Good job there, J B. You and your bug eyes probably look even worse now with your shaved head. Uh, then what happens? Then we get into X Division Championship match. Loki Austin Aries. Um, I liked this match. Um, thought it was a good match. I don't think either one of these guys can put on a bad match. Uh, Loki. Always awesome. Austin Aries, even more awesome. Uh, Austin Aries ends up winning this match and uh, taking the title. Then we go to the Knockouts Battle Royal. Taryn Terrell, Angelina Love, Velvet Sky, Madison Rain, Gail Kim, Havoc, and Rebel and her fine, juicy ass. Of course, she was eliminated first. Uh, then we go through, we do all this stuff. Now, Taryn Terrell ends up winning this match. I'm not going to go through the whole match. There's way too much to go go through. Um, but uh, Taryn Terrell ends up winning this match. Now, this is where it gets good. Uh, and I hope Shaheen comes back for this. After I am back. I, I, I actually heard Juicy Ass, so I came back. Okay, good. That was right when I was talking about Rebel and her Juicy Ass. Cool, Juicy yeah. Ass. Yes. After the match... Havoc comes out, starts attacking Taryn Terrell. The lights go off. Awesome Kong is standing there. What a huge bitch. That is, but I'm going to tell you something. What a great moment that was. And I mean, come on. How many people give a shit about women's wrestling? Probably not much, but this, this I can watch. These are two big girls. Yeah, honestly, I mean, uh, I don't think there is a bigger non-wrestling women fan. If that makes sense. Is it, does that make sense? Probably. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. I don't give a fuck about women's wrestling, but this actually looked pretty cool. I would be invested in this. So, if it has me interested and it gained, you know, some kind of interest from me, that says something because uh, I typically don't care for this. Yeah. Great, great job by TNA. Good signing. Um, so far, you know, perfect use for her re-debut back to the company. I thought it was just perfect. I was, I, 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 I gave a holy shit. I can't believe it's Kong. So, yeah, it was good stuff, man. Yeah, and I had read that she was in the arena, um, so it was a little bit spoiled for me, but uh, it was. Was still a pretty cool match. Not bad, you know. Good job. I I I gotta say, if you know TNA has, has done much right, but this they did right. Yeah, not bad at all. No. Uh, does she have a contract with them, or was this like a one-time appearance? It said she has signed. Nice. Yep. So good for her. I mean, I don't. I mean, WWE. What what, what were they gonna do with her? She's not a diva-looking girl. 
What? She could flick half of those girls out of the ring. <laughs> yeah. So, why not? Go back here. I mean, at least, uh, you know, her with, with, with Havoc there and Gail Kim there, she's got some good, <laughs> good matches. <coughs> Excuse me. She's got some good matches that she can have, you know? And yeah. I don't know. I guess we can. She, she can probably do something with Taryn Terrell too. So now, speaking of uh, total divas, did you hear of uh, Naomi getting kicked off the show? Yeah, I knew about that. Yeah, what happened with that? I don't know. I know that it had something to do with like her, uh, you know, relationship being on on camera. It may, but or I don't know. Either that, or she's going to end up being the divas champion very soon. Yeah, what's with that, man? What is? I I don't get it. They just don't want the Divas title to be seen on 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 E. Maybe it's because they're so far behind on that show. I mean, they're just getting into this whole Nikki and Brie stupid ass thing. The whole where she turned on. I mean, they're just getting into SummerSlam. Yeah. So that might be a thing of it. They don't really want to have it all confused, but... Yeah. That's God, stupid. So stupid. That is true. I mean, you already know... I mean, anyone who watches Total Divas knows this, knows that... Uh, and wrestling knows they're already... the. Uh, forget, I don't... I, I, can we not... Forget it. Okay. <laughs> <It's stupid. laughs> all right. <laughs> well, all right, then. It's so goddamn stupid. Yeah, there you go. Oh, righty then. Exactly. It's so stupid. Who gives a shit? I don't even want to deal with it. Anyway. <laughs> you, go, man. you know, I don't give a shit, so. There you go. On we go. On we go. Let's What's just next? go to the next match, which is, which, of course, is. This is your main event of the evening. This was it. Bobby Lashley, Bobby Roode, Bobby versus Bobby. Bob. Um, so the crowd could not just chant Bobby. They would not know which Bobby they were chanting for. True. True. They can't chant Bob, Bobby, Robert, Robbie, any of them. Good point. Good point. No, not really. I'm just kind of saying whatever I feel like. Go ahead. That's why it's a good point. There you go. What did well, you think? Uh, what, did you, what, did you, what did you think of this main event that was supposed to sh shake the wrestling world to its knees. Was it supposed to do that? Because I don't uh, think it did that. Oh, well, then, all right. Then just what did you think of the match then? I thought it was a pretty good match. I mean, uh, fuck, man. Bobby Lashley, this guy used to suck. Um, he's he's definitely much better now, so I can at least, you know, stand this guy now, which is, which is good. Uh, Bobby... Lashley definitely, you know, he's been kicking ass in, in in the in the MMA world, so that's that's definitely a plus. It makes him look like a badass. It makes it makes him look legitimate. So that's that's always a plus. And um, Bobby Roode just saw him at House of Hardcore about two months ago, defending the, the TNA title against Tommy Dreamer. Um, never was really. I actually, I think he is one of the underrated guys. But uh, I don't know. I was never really into him, but more recently. I've been uh, more invested into him, but I don't know if I ever mentioned this on the show, but when he came out at House of Hardcore, man, usually he's he's like a face. I guess he was supposed to be a face, but, man, they just, they completely shat on this guy. <laughs> I don't even know why, because uh, you could tell he was, he was taken off guard, because he wasn't expecting it. Wow. Yeah, it was really awkward, because even Tommy Dreamer, he came out and, you know, he was kind of taken, you know taken back at the response. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, very weird. But um, yeah, because he was he was trying to put over like, you know, the the city and everything, and, and people were just booing him and saying, you know, like, uh, fuck Bobby Roode and all this, fuck TNA and all this crazy shit, and very awkward, man. Very very awkward. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I, it seems like it would be. Oh, it was. But uh. Yeah, man. I, I thought it was a pretty good match. I didn't catch the last couple of minutes, the last couple of minutes of it, but um, I liked it, man. Overall, I thought I thought it was a great show. It certainly wasn't my favorite part of the show, but 
thought it was a good match for the for the main event. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a definitely a good match. About what you would expect for a TNA main event. These guys have had a few matches, so it wasn't anything. Um, wasn't anything to you know. Wasn't a right. A great, huge, you know, this awesome match. But it was definitely a good match. These two, like you, like like you said, Lashley has definitely improved. Yeah, definitely. It seems like a. I don't know, man. It's 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 like a whole new guy. He, he's got some, you know, intensity. He's, uh, dare I say, charisma. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you think? Do you think he could have been a big star in in the WWE? Because I, I was one of those people that, you know, during the time that I didn't watch wrestling, like of course I would tune back in every few months. And catch you know ten or fifteen minutes here and there just to see if anything interesting is going on that would that would gain my interest. To, you know, I was I was kind of desperately looking for a reason to, to watch it again, you know, but uh, subconsciously. But I don't know, man. He was one of those guys that I would I would tune in and I would see him as like the champion, and I was like, ah, all right, well, still not interested. But I guess he's 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 much better now. Much better now. I can't say he's one of my favorites, or I think he's great, or anything like that. But uh, he's he's definitely improved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't ready back then, which he probably wasn't ready back then. Uh, yeah. Definitely has a uh, definitely a lot better now. Um, maybe now he might have been a big star in TNA, or I'm sorry, in WWE. Bless. Sorry about that. He might have been now. I mean, he 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 probably could be right now. Yeah. I mean, they need people, and he's a big guy. I'm mean, Vince probably loves him. But then again, I mean, look at Titus O'Neil. Do I have to? No, you don't have to. But... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. But, uh... I guess his Twitter account was hacked. Did you see that? <laughs> I think, that, I think that guy is dangerous in the ring. Yeah. Did Did you see his uh his Twitter account? No. No. Um, huh? I believe it was hacked. Unless Unless somebody just photoshopped this, but I believe it was hacked, and he, you know, somebody was posting on his behalf, and one one of the pictures was a picture of of somebody's dick. And like the tip of the dick was photoshopped with his head, so it was coming from his his uh, Twitter account. And he was like, he put out a, a, a fucking tweet, you know, begging whoever it is to stop it and, and all this stuff. But I did see the picture. I didn't realize that was the picture, but I did see that. Picture. Yeah, it was it was from his Twitter. So another one of those awkward moments for you folks. That that's fucking awesome. Who who thought to put a dick with his head? On? It was actually they they did actually. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a great job, but they they did pretty well. I mean, I know. I, I thought it was funny. I know where the picture is, but I can't post it anywhere. Yeah. If there were more, if there was more people in the chat room, I'd post. What was that? Yeah. Nothing. Can you hear Fucking me? Drop, you drop the computer or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just don't worry about it. I dropped something okay. on the table. Okay, no problem. But uh, yeah, this wasn't a, a bad match. Do what? I said it's a bit of a struggle over here with four dogs. I got you. I got you. Um. Well, the match went on. I guess let's finish this match real quick, and then we'll get into bullshit and more. Um, match went on, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the match, a uh, couple of guys come out, masked men. Looks like they had just raided the uh, the movie Point Breaks uh, prop set. They came out as... Uh, w w w were they both Nixon, or was that uh, Reagan? I think it was Reagan. I don't know. I think it. I think That's it was the mask that, that robbers use is usually Reagan. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
yeah. I, I had just watched Point Break earlier that day, so it kind of fit for me. Um, and it, they come out, um, and they surround the ring, and it turns out they take their masks off. It's Loki and Samoa Joe. Eric Young runs out with a chair and ends up hitting Bobby Roode. All three of them turn heel on Bobby Roode. Lashley gets the pin, gets his gets his uh, title back. Hmm. Now you, I did not see this. What? I didn't see this part. I told you I didn't watch the last couple minutes. Oh, you said you're. That's right. See, I purposely put mine on five minute, um, and run. So that's what happened. That's actually interesting. That oh. sounds very interesting. I, I don't know. How do you feel about that? You watched it. I can't really. How do I feel about it? Um, they let, me, let me get this straight. Go ahead. What? Yeah, I apologize. Let me get this straight. So Samoa Joe, Eric Young, and Loki all turn heel. And are they like in a faction with Bobby Lashley now? Or what's, what's, what's going on? They're in the faction with Lashley, MVP, and Kenny King. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's a lot of fucking people. Yeah. Yeah. Like half the rock. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I kind of like it though. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. like it. I'm. It 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 left me a little curious what they're gonna do next week. Obviously, some people are going to end up turning babyface from this, and we'll find out who. Um, so, do you know why they did? Do I know why? Yeah. No. Well, the new day. New day. The new day is so fucking garbage that they didn't want to follow up with the with the three black guys in a group gimmick. They, they had to add. White dudes and some Samoans to it just just to switch it up. It's, it's it was that bad. Maybe that's it. It's a, let's get some white boys in here quick. Yeah, T and even TNA was offended by how horrible that was. I mean, <laughs> they, did they drop that gimmick already, or are they still out there dancing like idiots? They're still out there like idiots. Oh, nice. Yep. New day. New day. God damn, I feel like a fool. Even though, that makes me feel like a fool. Yeah, I'm gonna get the hot tag going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you missed hey, it. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get some, uh, trying to get some fucking business cards and uh, pass it out at, at, the, at the Rumble. Mm-hmm. That'd be annoying. Be really annoying. What? So that's gonna be annoying. What? Passing out cards? Passing out, yeah. Putting it on people's windshields and. Yeah. Just drop them. Just drop them on the floor. Drop them somewhere. Put them in the bathroom. Yeah. That's what I see. Asshole just took the whole stack and just put it in the trash. That's usually what happens. Or puts him in the toilet and pisses on him. There you go. So why would I do that? I don't know. <laughs> don't do that. I don't know why Wait, I mentioned I wasn't <laughs> planning on it. That was your suggestion. Yeah, I, I was joking. I was obviously joking. Shaheen. This guy. I think I was. I don't know. Well... I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. Th I don't know. I want to do something special for the rumble, though. I just, I'm not sure exactly what. But. Um. I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking, what, what could you do? Let's, do? let's let's do a live edition of of the Hot Tag Podcast from, from the, the rumble. rumble. Uh. Not 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 from the actual show. You could you could call in from your phone. Well, if I can figure out the Wi-Fi, I can take my laptop up there. Or uh, you could Skype in from your phone. True. Yeah. 
you know, I know, I know, yeah, I know a couple of people from from the from the Facebook are going to be there, so we're all going to be tailgating. So maybe we can get a couple extra people on there, get a whole fucking round table. Yeah, I saw you were uh, chatting about what y'all are going to do. Y'all got a grill. That's my man. I like that shit. Yeah, that's what I said, man. Yeah, I, I got you. Did you um? Oh, I guess we're done with TNA, right? I believe so. Yeah, I'm. I'm certainly excited now for TNA for next week, though. Now that you mentioned the whole yeah. new angle with the Samoa Joe and everybody else. Well, well, let's wait till they do a little bit more. I mean, it, it was their first show, and I, I thought it was good. I'm hoping they keep up the same direction with the, that they're doing, with you know, more action, less talking. Let's see what happens. Let's uh, let's hope for the best for TNA. Let's hope for some better ratings. Um, let's hope for some better ratings for uh, Lucha Underground. Let's hope for better ratings for everything coming out. Um, I mean, TNA didn't do that bad. Looks like they did a total. In th- th- this is including the replay of four hundred and sixty-four thousand. Yeah. Uh, about oh. half their audience. Yeah. That's about half their audience. Um, meanwhile, for that channel, that's awesome. So, what are you gonna do? Um, well, I know. I know. Dixie's like. A, a spokesperson for for Discovery now, and she's a representative on on, on their behalf. And oh Jesus Christ! Now, so yeah. You know. Oh Jesus! Be on TV soon. Horrible, horrible, horrible. But um, did you see the? Uh, hold on here. Did you see the video of Jeff Hardy? No. Okay. There's a video of Jeff Hardy at the at next week's or in a couple weeks then at they're they're gonna do a lockdown show. Um Jeff Hardy takes a hard bump off the cage and looks like he got himself knocked out again. Wow. This was a bump off the cage door and I watched it. Um I posted the Link, but I'm gonna post just the video. I've got it what right. Is here. It? I can't post just the video. It's not a. Uh, it's not a YouTube video. When is this from? Recently, like a few days. De- like, dude, even Tommy Dreamer said, I've seen Jeff Hardy take some ridiculous bumps. First time ever I'm concerned for his health, and this is coming from me. And this was yesterday, so this must have been yesterday where he did this. But uh, yeah. it, 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 I did post it on the, on the Facebook page. It's, uh, it's not too far down on there. It's, uh, so you, you got it? No, hold on one second. Yeah, you should check that out real quick. While we're doing that, Booker T is now permanently on Raw. What do you think about that? I, dude, a lot of people like it. I personally, I'm not a big fan of this. No, I'm not a big fan of Booker I don't T. Give a shit about Booker T. It's gonna be more. All these guys do right now is try to get the best joke in as quick as they can. Yeah. It, it's it's who can be funniest. So and it's none of them funny. So it's like... Yeah, none of it's really funny. So Mick, oh, Foley's, kids were at, uh, Mick Foley's kids were at the uh, TNA tapings actually. Mick Foley's daughter is uh pretty hot. Yep, she was there, and uh, his son were both at the uh, TNA tapings in New York. And yeah, definitely said that they had a lot of production problems at TNA. They um, let's see, yeah, the production board went down not once but twice. Finally got it working again. Yeah, they were not doing good. Let's hope that all the production stuff can get worked out by next show too. Yeah, 
I just checked out the Jeff Hardy clip. I mean, it, it didn't look that bad, but uh, I don't know. That's a hard, but he hit hard. The, when he hit, the, the, I, the bump, the fall itself didn't look bad. The landing looked bad. What I couldn't really make out what he hit. Was it was it the stairs? That looked like either the stairs or the ring apron. One of the two. Yeah. Either one has no give. Right. Mm. Mm. He's gotta stop doing this. You know, again, another guy similar to Kurt Angle. You know, he's getting up there with age. I mean, I'm not saying he's an old guy, but you know, fuck, dude, you can't. That bump that he took from from Bobby Lashley doing the swats on to the outside onto the stair the stairway. I mean, that's that was insane. Yeah, he definitely. He's poor man, you've already wowed us. We know what you've done. It's all right. You can you can still you know go out there and get a pop without damn near killing yourself. Yeah, I'm, I mean I I know he loves doing this and he loves getting that big pop, but. Uh... But I'll tell you one thing though, man. Shit, if you want to go ahead and keep doing this, go ahead, man. I'm not the one to tell you. Shit, I'm, I'm, I'm entertained by it, so if you want to go ahead and damn near kill yourself, you know, entertaining people out there for, for wrestling, that's your business. Do what you got to do, man. Just, uh, I just hope you can walk by the time you're 40. Right, yeah. I just hope I don't see you at uh, Legends of the Ring in 10 years in a wheelchair. And I don't mean that as a joke. I really mean that. Like, I, Yeah, you see him, I mean... You see this guy taking bumps like that, and let's face it, guys. What he he he's seen his age, isn't he? Thirty six. Yeah, he's he's almost he's almost forty, I believe. Let's see here. We got to be spitting our facts at everybody. Let's, gotta, let's go with thirty six. Let's see if we're right. I think he is. Okay, he's thirty seven. Right. Close enough. Yeah, August thirty first, nineteen seventy seven. So, yeah. I mean, you see Matt Hardy, he barely does anything in the ring now. So, dude, yeah. Matt Matt Hardy can barely get, he can barely jump anymore. Exactly. Man. Can he please put a shirt on, man? He's, I mean, well, he was wrestling with a shirt on. Everybody was making fun of a shirt. You know, I know he was wrestling with a shirt for a while. Shit, he came out with a shirt. He, he pretty much debuted. Well, he didn't debut, but. He debuted the Hardy Boys with, with shirts on. He, he was a jobber in, like, 95. But. True. Yeah. Man, have you seen the footage from, from, like, the Hardy Boys from, like, 95? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were some scrawny-ass little good kids, man. It's, it's crazy. It is, man. <clears throat> it is. Seen Jeff Hardy and Razor Ramon. Yeah, exactly. I've s I have think I posted that match. Have you? I think Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I did once, oh. yeah. I did. Oh no, I'm looking at something from um You ever heard of the richest dot com? No, I have not. All right, it's a website that usually tells people's net worth and stuff, but they have a thing here from November of last year, the top ten craziest rumors in WWE history. Okay. You want to do it? Absolutely. Let's do it. Should Number you ten. Post the link on uh, Facebook. I will right now. I'm copying. I am pasting. And you can't miss the hot girl in the picture. Okay. There it is. Boom. You did not miss her. She's right here. You, she is pretty hot. I'm not even her sure exactly who she is, but she's pretty smoking hot. All right. Let's start with number 10, and I do not remember this. Rey Mysterio what? and Jennifer Aniston, Aniston dating. Aniston, yes. Jennifer yeah. Aniston. Aniston, yeah. Jennifer Aniston. Woo, it's showtime, folks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't remember this, but it looks like sometime in the mid-'90s, National Enquirer ran a story about it. That's true. Well, it was later debunked, but... <laughs> you 
You know this is tr- this is true, man. Oh, National Enquirer, of course. That's true. Of course. No, in, in, in all honesty, I you know I'd never heard of this, but uh, I can't really see this happening. Jennifer Aniston with a wrestler. I mean, <laughs> probably you know. No offense to to Rey Mysterio, you know, but Rey Mysterio at that. Hmm. Uh, Let's see here. The next one, Raven and his exhibitionist tendencies. Uh, It is said that 26-time hardcore champion, god damn, 26-time hardcore champion, known for his grungy sociopathic gimmick, likes to walk around in his birthday suit. Rumor that when Stone Cold was married to Deborah McMichael, he caught Raven strolling backstage nude. (laughs) <laughs> I heard I heard this before. I mean, uh, I'm yeah, pretty sure I'm pretty sure this is true because I think some people discussed this on 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 the like, shooter interviews. Really? Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I can't I can't say it's a fact because I don't I can't recall who, but you know, it's, it's def- I mean, I've definitely heard of this before, but I just don't remember if I heard it on the shoot or if I read it. But I'm pretty sure I heard some people discussing it on the shoot. Huh. But yeah. it wouldn't surprise me, though. They, they did say that uh, Raven is kind of obsessed with just, like, walking around naked. And all yeah. That. But uh, this says that him and Steve got into a, a heated confrontation, is what it says. That's the words it uses. Yeah. So, there is that. Uh, that would be awkward. That uh, would be a little bit awkward. Um, next... Lita's Mexico days. God Ooh, damn. She's a fucking sexy girl. Well, we can pretty much go ahead and say this is a fact, right? Lita was to break inspired by Mexico. She began to occur. There are rumors floating that during her time she would offer special favors in exchange for training. Yeah. Um Lucky them. I mean you've you've I've heard of this before, right? I have heard this rumor before, and again, lucky, lucky those guys. I uh, wish I was a wrestling trainer in Mexico myself. Well, I'm sure at the time she probably didn't look too good. She she always looked good. Yeah, I don't know. Did you see her in ECW when she had like no tits? I still thought she was hot. Yeah, but just imagine like six years before that, she was probably like. You know, like nineteen, just like looking like a dude, basically. Oh, nineteen, young, tight. Oh man. Oh. Next one is. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, Sid put a squirrel down his pants. Oh God. This I have not heard. The six foot nine tall superstar apparently had a pet squirrel that he took with him everywhere he went. One day, other wrestlers challenged him to put the animal down his pants and keep it there for a full minute. Sid accepted and ended up in the hospital after the squirrel attacked his sensitive parts. It says, "I I don't really believe this, but that's that is insane if that's true." I so want to believe this. <laughs> it sounds so good if it's true, but uh, it's again, so. Funny. What a dick, though. I mean, that's fucking animal cruelty, man. Huh? And if you know anybody knows me, you know animals. I'm, I'm all for them. Humans, on the other hand, you know, probably fuck like half of them. But uh, animals are good with me. Yeah. Oh my god, that just sounds painful. Did you hear of uh? Did you hear about like the Von Erichs? They like. I don't know, they killed chickens or rabbits and stuff in the locker room. Some Something crazy. I don't remember. Do you recall this? No. There is... Let me let me try and find it. There was something with one of the Von Erichs, um, like, ripping a chicken in half or something. But I... Well, I find this. This is going to take me a couple of minutes, probably. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, that's cool. Ah, oh, this is this is pretty much fact. But uh, you can go ahead and get into it. Yeah, this one is. Um, 
hold on one sec. The uh, JBL um, shower hazing antics. We've all heard this one um, more than once. JBL, known as J John Bradshaw Layfield, known as JBL, several roles. I'm not going to get into all that, blah, blah, blah. Also known for being quite a bully. Openly admitted, but did not apologize for hazing The Miz during his early, uh, early career. Um, during his days, it says JBL apparently liked to terrorize young recruits. One of the most unsettling allegations about his hazing was that he would haze the newbies by joining them in the shower and helping them soap up. <clears throat> Fucking JBL. <laughs> I was waiting for something, man. No, I'm, I was reading this thing. <laughs> okay, JBL. Yeah. JBL, um, we've all I don't heard find him entertaining at all, man. I don't know how people find him entertaining at all. I don't know, man. I I'm surprised he's still with WWE. All the bullshit bullying stories I've heard from him, about him, not from him, about him. Yeah, there we go. Kevin Von Erich rips the cat apart. Ew. Yeah, what a sick fuck. Probably why uh, he went ahead and killed himself. So. Wow. Yeah, what goes around comes around, man. Don't be a dickhead and probably won't end up like uh, Kevin Von Erich. Yeah. Damn. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm probably going to get shitted on for saying that, but I don't give yeah. a shit. What? You rip the cat apart in the locker room to, to get a get a fucking reaction out of out of the, the wrestlers in the back or the so called boys. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you just type in Von Eric killed cat, you can see the shoot interview right there. Nice. Nice. Now I've got uh, the next one here. Which is the Ultimate Warriors Death Cover Up. Uh, basically, this is, uh, this is not about his death now, by the way. This right, is not, right. This is about back at WrestleMania eight when he uh, re uh, re debuted for the company. A lot of people said it was a different warrior. He looked different. Um, really, what had happened is Jim had lost some weight and uh, cut his hair. So, <laughs> right, he stopped uh, stopped taking steroids. Yeah, yeah, probably exactly. Um, and that's that one right there. Uh, we don't need to get more into that one. Or maybe uh, he's still taking steroids. He just wasn't injecting fucking horse steroids into his ass, you know. Yeah. The rest of the soul. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you know, fact is fact. Yeah. So, up uh, the next one is uh, a notorious Randy Orton pooping in a bag. I think there's been many encounters with uh, wrestlers and, and, and pooping in the bags, hasn't there? Yeah, this is a girl named Rochelle Lowen, who I guess is a model. I don't remember this girl. This is the chick that was uh, that you said was hot, that you didn't know who she was. There you go. Well, yeah, I, I don't remember this girl, but yeah. I don't know. I guess in 2005... She spoke about the incident and claims Randy Orton pooped in her bag. She says Orton vandalized her, vandalized her expensive belongings. Dude, that's, but, that sounds ridiculous, man. <laughs> Bro, but her bag pooped in her bag. But wait, she says she knows it because her bag was covered in baby oil, self-tanning lotion, not poop. Wow. According to her, Orton was upset that she had no idea who he was. Wow. What a bitter uh just stop us. Oh ma'am. Where's your bag, ma'am? <laughs> Where's your bag, ma'am? That is so childish though, man. I mean somebody doesn't know who you are, so you go and poop in a bag. Uh, I, mean, it's just, I hope that's not true. I kinda hope that's I'm pretty sure it is. Hope it, I kinda hope it is. Um because <laughs> I've I've Hard, a couple of different stories about the guy taking poops in, in different people's bags. Yeah. Yeah, so 
Let's see here. Ben Stiller supposedly smoking marijuana at Raw. Marijuana. In 1999, movie star Ben Stiller made a television appearance on Raw. Turns out that before the taping, producers could not find him anywhere. Vince Russo says he finally found the actor smoking pot with Road Dog and X-Pac behind the trailers. Man. Russo says that he always wondered if Stiller agreed to take a blow to the head later because he was just high. What the hell? I, n I never heard of this one. I think I have once before. Um, I'm 99.9% sure X-Pac talked about it on his shoot interview, his uh, You Shoot. Yeah. I think he did talk about this. Man, so that's weird. Uh, uh, that'd probably be a good time though. Hanging out with Ben Stiller. Oh yeah. That would be fun. That would be definitely fun. Uh let's see. You know, bro, uh, it's 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 honestly crazy how strong the Armstrong genes are as far as, you know, like physical features. They all look the fuck the same, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They look identical almost. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, ra random thought that I just had to blur out. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Randy Savage gave Hulk Hogan a black eye. Number two. Yeah, right. I've never heard this right one. Before WrestleMania 9, right? Looks like it. Let's, yep, right before WrestleMania 9, Hulk Hogan showed up WrestleMania with a sporting a black eye. Even the Hogan and WWE officials explained that the black eye was a result of a jet ski accident. Some say Savage believed that Hogan and his then-wife, uh, Miss Elizabeth, were having an affair and punched him. Another one I hope is true. Wow. Well, uh, let's kind of combine number one and two, because number one is kind of not related, <laughs> It, uh, yeah, who hasn't heard this one? It's the usual Stephanie slept right. with Randy. I still don't believe it. That would have made Randy a pedophile, basically. Um, right. But it, it is kind of odd how... I mean, I'm not sure if you've seen the documentary, but not Triple H, not Stephanie, nor Vince McMahon. None of them make an appearance on the, on, on the interviews. Well... I don't know. Well, it was said that they were going to address the rumor big time on the DVD, and it never was. They they didn't, but they kind of they hinted at, at, at something happened that was uh, that was kept behind closed doors, and they kind of left it as that. But I don't know. Did you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they kind of subliminally kind of, you know, Went into it, but not really. It was it was just just a game publicity, man. And you know what it is. Yeah, I I really don't believe that. I don't care. I I, I you know what? Give a shit, man. Man, this is the same fucking guy. I mean, you know, no offense. I mean, the guy's a, a, a genius and everything, all that all that good stuff. But you can't deny the fact that the guy is sick. You know, I mean, uh, Core Bauer. You're I'm I'm sure you're familiar with him, right? Uh huh. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, former writer. Uh, right. MW, go ahead. Right. Et, et cetera, et cetera. MLW right. podcast. The guy. Um, he was. He, he had a roundtable like last year, I think, with huh? a couple other WWE writers, and they were talking about an angle where they were on a on a press conference on on like a four way or whatever with Vince, and Vince was discussing an angle where he actually wanted to have an angle done where he was banging Steph. So. Right. I mean, this guy, he's fucking weird. I mean. It wouldn't really shock me that this happened and Vince is really just capitalizing on the fact that it happened and he's just banking on it and making money on it. I mean, the guy's done some really scummy things, so this this wouldn't be the probably worst, but it, it'd be right up there. Yeah. He's like God a bunch of times, so. I would not want to, I don't know. I personally don't want to think of Macho Man that way, that he would be some kind of perv that would do a young, you know, a 14-year-old girl, which is the age that they say it happened. Um, yeah, that's... I didn't, I didn't know that. that that's kind of... Yeah, it's... That, I, I, that is... That's just fucking that, sick. 
I think that's the allegation aged in this. So I really don't want to believe that because I don't want to think that way of Macho Man. So that, have you have you watched the the documentary? I haven't, dude. You, you need to, man. You need to, because it's would... it, it's really weird. Because they kind of they don't say that he hasn't. You know, I mean, they've asked is his brother several times and he just says, you know, only Randy knows. He never says he didn't, you know. I mean it's it's your fucking brother. If you if you know that he, he would never do such thing, you just say, Oh no, there's there's no way. But the fact that he doesn't completely deny it and, and dismiss the rumor, it just makes it it makes yeah, you really right. kind, of, you know, kind of be like, okay, well there's there's something to it. There's a there's a reason he's not just just going out there and saying, you know what? No, my brother would never do this, you know, and it's et cetera. But he just, I don't know. You would just dismiss it. He never did that. He never fully denied it. Well, yeah, I don't know, man. I just really would not want to, uh, I don't know. I I would hope Savage isn't that, wasn't that kind of guy. But I guess, it, you know, it I'm was not- Man, people were all fucked up. Yeah, and it is really weird because when uh, obviously when he couldn't come to an agreement with with Vince on on a contract, he left for WCW, and uh, Vince came on Raw. I believe it was in like ninety three, ninety four, ninety four probably. Um, he came on Raw and he said he was his biggest fan and all this stuff. So then again, you know, if if he did that to your daughter, you wouldn't come out there and say. You know, I'm his biggest fan, and you know, I wish him all the all the best of luck in the world, and all this good stuff. So I don't know. There's really, yeah. I don't know. Man. I, 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 I don't know, man. I, I just plain and simple. I think Randy was a better guy than that. So let's. Uh, I don't know, man. Well, I got another uh, one over here. Oh, what do you got? I got 12 pranks you won't believe these wrestlers pulled off. Um, would you like to get into this one? Top top 12 ribs. Posted. Posted. God damn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, number 12. Did you put it on uh, Facebook? Yeah. Awesome. Let me refresh. You did? No, I don't want to suffer. Oh, God damn it, Shaheen. Jesus. God damn go. Slacking the fuck off. There you go, man. Go ahead. Sorry. Didn't, didn't mean to get him off. Sorry about that. There we go. There we go. Done it. Bingo. Twelve pranks you won't believe these wrestlers pulled off. Can you believe it? Number twelve is uh Owen Hart and Michael Cole. Michael. Michael. What's up, Michael? Michael Cole will most certainly never forget his first ever interview with the WWE. During a live event, Cole waited nervously as he was about to interview Owen Hart. And I guess Owen Hart was a was a big time rever, wasn't he? Yeah, they say he was like known for it. Like a all time best one of the all time best pranksters out there. Yeah. Anyway. Cole recalls being so nervous and so shaky minutes before the live inter- interview took place. Just before the interview went live, Owen and the British Bulldog decided to pull a little joke on the new employee. The two proceeded to pour a liter of Coke down the tuxedo pants of Michael Cole just before the interview went live. Not having any time to react, Cole conducted the interview of not- as if nothing happened. Despite having a liter of coke down his pants, certainly a moment Michael Cole will never forget. I mean, this is not really a good rib. This is kind of corny. That is kind of funny. Cole had to sit there. Like nothing happened. All right, let's do a couple more, and if if they suck, we'll go on to something else. Yeah. I mean, I guess British Bulldog, he was, he was another one that was a big time rubber, right? I guess so. I guess there were just a lot of guys out there that were just big pranksters. I, I guess, it, I mean, obviously not much anymore. Yeah. Man. 
Yokozuna and Kurt Hennig. Kurt Hennig was another guy that was that, that was pranking everybody. But uh, yeah. Yokozuna, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to fuck with that guy. No. Definitely, man. But uh, Mr. Perfect was known to be one of the best pranksters in his day, and the late Yokozuna was one of his one of his victims. Henning decided to put X lax, man, that's 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 fucked up. Into a large chocolate bar and give half to half of the lace bar to Yokozuna. After eating the the bar, Yoko began to feel ill and needed to use the washroom instantly. <laughs> the factor was that a man of Yoko's size did not fit into the airplane bathrooms. What an asshole. <laughs> what a fucking asshole, man. Why is he doing this to this big ass guy, man? I mean, you could do this to a normal guy, it'd be funny, but on an airplane to like a 600 pound dude? This makes it funnier. <laughs> what an asshole. After a bit of panic, a stewardess on the airplane allowed Yokozuna to release in the back of the plane on newspapers, and to make matters worse, the stewardess had to stand there the entire time holding up a blanket. <laughs> Heard had a rest in peace, sir, but you... That's fucking awesome. Oh, what happened, man? A fucking advertisement took over my page. Yeah, uh, the next one is X-Pac Prank Stable. Oh, yeah. First one. I'm clicking a few links ahead purposely because I know this page has some uh, ads on it that can mess you up sometimes. Um, is, is this when X-Pac shits in her bag? Yeah, I believe so. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. This is when X-Pac shits and pisses in her bag. Yeah. They said she... Uh, They said she freaked out a little bit, but I don't know. The only the, the no. one they said never freaked out. The one they said no sold it completely was Sunny. Yeah, but that's because she's probably like fucked up on pills. So I didn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. This the, this is one everyone's heard of, so we don't have to get to the uh, Sable one. Yeah. So where do we go from there? Rob Number nine. Gangrel. Yep. Rob Van Dam and Gangrel. Go ahead. Yeah. During his earlier days as a member of the AWR wrestling promotion, what is AWR? Are you familiar with this? Um, I'm going to go AWR American Wrestling Revolution. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's crazy. All right. Rob Van Dam, along with some other wrestlers, decided to have some fun. Rob had found an inflatable doll. You go ahead and drop it up. What's that? Uh, uh, American Wrestling Rampage. Okay. Rob had found an inflatable doll at a truck stop and decided to bring it along for the ride at the arena. Rob, along with other wrestlers in the promotion, thought it would be funny to put the doll in Gangrel's casket, which they would use the casket in a match later that night. Thankfully, just before the match, Gangrel would find the doll in the casket, and the two wrestlers had a big laugh about it. This, this is not a good rib at all. This is not even a rib. Like, why is this funny? These guys have to get you, like, fired from TV. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean... These are all right. It's just like I said. Well, you know, it, it didn't happen. That's why it's not funny. If it happened, it would be funny as hell. Oh, it, well, you know, let's see here. Tommy, Dream, Tommy Dreamer and Steve Carino. Dreamer, huh? Let's see. Steve Carino recalls it during an interview, calling it one of the most memorable pranks he's ever seen during his talk. Or after a match with Tommy Dreamer, Dreamer claimed Carino was too reckless during the match and injured Tommy. In order to get his revenge, Dreamer proceeded to pull his pants down as he did a brownie that was stuck up there fell out of his pants in an effort to pretend it was, well, you know. Huh? C.W. Anderson instantly barfed as soon as he did it. Was this, was this on TV? I don't think so. That would be awesome. I got one question. Was C.W. Anderson actually related to, like, Arn, or was that just a gimmick? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was just a gimmick. Probably just a gimmick to try to get him. Yeah, over. get a name off the guy. Yeah, probably. He looked he looked pretty old when he debuted. Yeah, he wasn't exactly, uh... Yeah, you're right. So... 
All right, what do we got here? Next one. We got uh, Foul Venus and who else? Let me try to just... Foul uh, Venus? Wait a minute. Did you say Foul Venus? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you... Uh, were you the one that posted the link that he's, he's opening up like a marijuana shop in, in L.A.? Yeah. Or in Colorado, actually? Yeah, he's opening up a um, oh oh basically it's a it's a a, a we a vapor weed lounge that you can go vape in and yeah, That's pretty he's cool. opening one up. That's fuck yeah, that is man. I'm, I I want to go work for him. Yeah, let's let's try to let's try to get him on the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who do you work for, Val Venus? Val Venus. Help, ladies. That would be awesome. If I walked that, that, that's how I would apply for the job. Yeah. What do you think you could do for my company? Hello, ladies. You're hired. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bang the whole second floor. Oh man, yeah, I did post that link. He's uh, I could probably get more info on it if you want me to. Yeah, well, we're not in Colorado, so. Probably won't yeah. be necessary, but that would, that would definitely be cool to go there. Yeah, yeah. So, Owen Hart right. looked like new wrestlers upon their arrival as a type of hazing. Mal Venus was just one of those victims. Earlier in the day, during an autograph signing, Val refused to sign a fan who brought a large stack of photos for him to sign. Val refused, thinking they were just for the purpose of selling. Owen and Jeff Jarrett were witness to the situation and use it as a source of inspiration for a prank later that night. While Val Venus was in his room, Owen called Val's room, pretended to be the autograph seeker, and demanded that Val come downstairs and sign his autographs. Venus grew very upset and stormed downstairs. As he approached the lobby, Owen and Jeff Jarrett told him that the seeker just had just left. Venus reportedly spent most of the night looking for the non-existent person. Again, uh, <laughs> Oh uh, no! Well, the funny part is they probably never told them that the guy was gone. That he was never there. Yeah, I guess it would be kind of funny to just watch a probably you know highly intox toxic idiot guy. Uh, yeah. Okay. This this is another one. around the lobby's looking for a non-existent guy. I guess that's kind of funny. That's pretty funny. I like that one. The next yeah. one is not the one we've all heard though. Um. Yeah. Shit. The shit sandwich. The 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 subway shit sandwich and yeah, that Mark Henry ate. Um. If you want to hear this one live or from the mouth of um X Pac, listen to his you shoot. He tells the whole story. You got you got to be a ballsy little guy to prank Mark Henry though. I mean. Well, at that time, he was big with the click. Ain't nobody was going to fuck with X-Pac. Regardless, man, if, if there's a guy out there that just doesn't give a fuck, you, you can't think. I mean, maybe back then, but in, today, in today's society, you can't you can't underestimate people, man. Some people just don't give a fuck, and they just they, they lash out, you know? Yeah. Some people, yeah. It's, it's, you know, a job in their future no longer is, 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 is worth it, and, and their respect, and... You know, pride and all that stuff is is, is weighs heavier on, on, on their heart than, than fucking money. So he could be one of those guys, and you never know, man. He could end up knocking everybody out. You never know. And then he would have been on WCW, so. Never know. There you go. Never know. Want to get into the next one? The next one. Owen Hart pranks Bret Hart. This is probably good. Main difference in the two brothers was their level of seriousness while working. Brett was generally very serious backstage, took his job quite seriously, while Owen, on the other hand, loved to joke around and have fun. One night while feuding with Brett, Owen decided to play a joke on his brother. Before the show, Owen hit a can of sardines under the ring during the match. As you expect, as you might expect, Owen went under the ring and rubbed the sardines on his hand. He would proceed to shove his hand filled with sardines and smear it all over Brett's face. After the match was over, Brett could not confront his brother. 
and Owen had, had his bags packed and left the building immediately. Yeah, that, that's a good one. That's, that's actually a good one. That's pretty good one. The fact that Owen left. <laughs> yeah, that's gross. That is pretty funny, though. Can you imagine that, having like a long match, and you're already like sweaty and tired, and then you got fucking smashed up sardines on your face? Oh, that's funny. That's not cool. Uh-oh. The next one is another Kurt Henning one. Go for it, Shaheen. All right. Despite being loved by his fans, the late great Ultimate Warrior was very disliked by his peers early in the wrestling career. That's that's one of those guys, man, that I probably wouldn't want to fuck with because he's so fucking serious, you know? But yeah. again, he's, he's, he's aiming high, man. Ultimate Warrior Yokozuna. Yeah. yeah. Hennig, who was the master prankster at the time, decided to put a bucket of waste under the ring. The significance of this was that Warrior had to stay under the ring as part of the show. After finally realizing what the horrible smell was, while he was under the ring, it was too late for the Warrior to get rid of the bucket of waste. The fans were all crowded in the stands, so basically Warrior had to stay in this smell the entire time. Until it was time for him to appear on camera. That's fucking gross, man. I would hate that shit. Oh, God. Are, dude, why are wrestlers so okay with just shitting in buckets and bags and just... Because you, you know that, that he got the whole locker room to just, like, shit in a bucket and, and fuck with the warrior, man. This is disgusting. Oh. It's disgusting. Oh, God. That is fucked up. That is fucked up. Oh, man. That's nasty. Um, That's funny as hell, though. You had to sit down there. Yeah, man. Cafe, bitch. Cafe. <laughs> gross. Wrestlers just like to shit anywhere besides a toilet. It looks like. Well, that's true, man. Why do they, I don't. I don't understand the obsession with shit in pro wrestling. <clears throat> he loves. It. I mean, even Vince. I mean, he loves it. Oh, Vince! I love a good prank. <laughs> Give me some more shit. Oh God. He's going to puke. All right, this one's long. I ain't reading this one. You're doing it. Oh, dude, come on, man. I'm, I'm already on a couple painkillers for my teeth, man. I'm already struggling. All right, All right I got it. I know you're hearing slurring, man. I'm, I'm halfway gone. It's cool, man. I'll take it. I'll take it. You'll get the next one. The next one's short, I think. Nah, I don't care, man. Yeah the, yeah, the next two are short. You can get the next two. I'll, I'll take this one. Vince McMahon pranks... The coach, which we all knew as Jonathan Coachman, who obviously is doing very good after WWE. Um, let's see. This was because, uh, let's see, Jonathan Coachman learned early in his career that because of his role in the company, it would be harder for wrestlers to accept him as one of their own. Although his reaction to Vince McMahon's prank and the way he handled the situation turned the coach into becoming one of the boys. This great prank began with Jerry Briscoe telling the coach to start a fantasy football pool and pick up $10 from those who be, those who wanted to participate. After starting the pool, two cops came into Jonathan's dressing room and claimed the coach was running a gambling pool, which is a various, very serious offense. The cops proceeded to tell the coach that they needed to take him in. Before they left, the cops stopped in front of Vince McMahon's office telling him about the situation. McMahon began yelling... At Coachman in his face, telling him he wasted the company's time. All the yelling took place in front of Triple H, Stephanie The Rock, Kevin Dunn, and Jerry Briscoe, who are all in on it. After nearly an hour of this mayhem, McMahon turned down the demand. No, McMahon turned down the demand to bail out the coach. After the coach attempted to plead with Vince, the cops proceeded to take Coach away. After going a mile down the road. The cops turn around, say they forgot something. After they headed back and went to Vince's office, everyone was laughing. The coach realized... Yeah. He was part of one of the... He went to his locker and cried for 10 minutes. Okay, so... That's a good one. So, because he cried for 10 minutes, that made him one of the boys. I love it. I'm confused. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great that's generation of wrestling. 
That is a good prank, though. They, they went a mile down the road before telling him. I mean, that's that's, that's a big time prank, man. That is that is a highly executed fucking great prank. <laughs> it's almost like a fucking movie, you know? It's like a that is pretty fucking good. That is a pretty good big good prank. But and how much you want to bet they use real cops for this? Think so. I could only see Vince using real cops for something like this. They probably knew cops in the town back then. Maybe. They Maybe. probably did. So, all right. Next two are yours. I'm going to sit here and use my uh, magic flight. All right. <laughs> Grace pranks Owen Hart, which is really an odd, odd couple right here. Yeah, definitely. But uh, this, this should be good. <laughs> All right. Finally, a story that has a wrestler getting back at Owen. Harley Race was extremely displeased when he fell into one of Owen's pranks. One day at Harley's house, Owen decided to put loads of hot sauce into the chili. After the prank, Harley realized Owen was one of the only people that did not eat the chili. Thinking Owen got away with it, the following night on Raw, Race ex extended his hand to Owen for a good prank. Owen... Uh, Oblied, and as he went to shake Race's hand, he got tased by a taser race. By a taser race? What the hell is a taser race? It tased by a taser race used on him. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm fucking running off. A taser? Oh, shit. And Owen dropped to the floor and was unconscious. This situation did not slow Owen down one bit as he continued his journey on being the best prankster in wrestling history. A fucking taser in his hand, man. Yeah, and he tasered him right, and it says right on Raw. I don't, I don't ever recall Harley Race being on Raw. No, but this also could have been back when they were taping it, so they might have edited that out. So, all right, number one is yours, sir. Owen Hart pranks Edge. Oh, Owen Hart's in like five of these. Owen, dude, what? God damn it! Owen must have been the fucking prank man. Uh, clearly. Clearly. Yeah, like we said, yet another Owen story. Yep. This involves Edge. During a tag team match, Owen kept repeatedly, repeatedly hitting Edge with a foreign object. Edge could not make out what it was because Owen would always quickly hide it under his armpit. Not knowing what it was, Edge would sell that he was badly hit with the hard illegal object. Later, in the, I can see the, where this is going. Later in the match, after using it again, the ref would ask Owen to raise his arm and show the ref what he was using. Much to the shock of Edge, it was a napkin. Yes, a napkin. Poor Edge was selling the fact that he got hit with it repeatedly with a napkin. That's 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 fucking gold. Oh, God. Why did you not get fired for all this shit, man? Dude, this was back in the day, and I bet they did this at house shows. That's fucking awesome. He was hitting him with a napkin. That is pretty awesome, man. That is pretty fucking cool. That's badass, man. The thing about Owen, I mean, God, God, my rest is old, man. I mean, the thing about Owen is when you look at his face, he doesn't look like he had a good sense of humor, you know? He looked like he was serious. Do you get that vibe from him? Like when you look at him, you can never imagine him doing doing these things. Oh no, he looked he looked almost as serious as Brett most most for the most point. Same with like uh, Davy Boy Smith. Like when I heard all these stories about him, I could never imagine him doing these things because he actually looked like the ultimate baby face at the time. You know? Yeah. And hearing him doing all this crazy shit, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, it's kind of like when you hear Cena make, pulling a prank on someone, you're like, Cena, what? Yeah, but this is a whole different age. Like their pranks nowadays, like you know, fucking crossing out something on your comic book or something. Like, like, like switching their Xbox game in the back. There you go. Switching like the memory card or something. Yeah, well, I don't think Xbox have memory cards anymore, Shaheen. Whatever, dude. I don't play video games. So. Like, like, like putting. It'd be like putting Madden, you know, Madden fifteen. In a, in a GTA 5 case. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't play games, so I can't. I can't tell. You want to do one more before we get out of here? You, uh, you got another one? I've been looking for news, trying to stretch this show out a little bit, but um, 24 I, most uh, shocking crimes committed by professional wrestlers. 
I saw that. I saw 24 of them, though. I wasn't sure if you wanted to get into that, but uh, if you do, I'm down. Yeah, sure. Uh, 24, Lex Luger. 2003 was not a good year for Luger. Medicine shouldn't add to what the best fuck is this, man? What was that? Oh, I guess Shaheen must have had an ad, and now he's on you. Advertisement. I. That's weird how everything plays over your your speakers, though. Well, it's because I took the headphones out. It was fucking killing me. <laughs> All right, post that link real quick, man, because I I lost that one. Oh, here, hold. On. No, hold on. I'll post it up. Yeah, go ahead. We got a couple people in here, so. Oh. Um, let me check Here this out real quick. Oh, 03, Lex Luger. Uh, clearly he was arrested for the whole thing with uh, Elizabeth, I guess. This is something we already know about. I, re I remember this. Totally remember this. Yeah, I definitely remember all of this. When um, they basically raided his house and found steroids and Miss Elizabeth was there. Yeah. Yep. Matt and Moore. Miss Elizabeth was there dead. Let's not forget that. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Honest, dude, I, I'm kind of glad, and we can tie this in with the whole Randy Savage thing. Um, definitely, when you get a chance, man, check out that documentary, please, because there is a section in there. There's a clip of Lex Luger, current Rex, Lex Luger, like, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which was surprising. Um, oh, I've seen him. I've seen him recently. He looks very skinny, very sick. Oh yeah. Mm. But uh, there's a clip where they're asking him about Elizabeth and uh, Randy Savage's relationship with uh, Elizabeth, to be to be specific. Right. And Lex Luger. He he goes on and, and to say that you know it's 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 a, it's a doggy dog world. You know, you you gotta. It is. It is what it is, you know. And, and basically saying, and, and the look that he gave, dude, I can't. I can't describe it. It's one of those things where you just gotta watch it. Um, it's so fucking creepy. It's like, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really want to ruin it because it's. It's one of those things. I, I want you to watch it. Um, okay. Definitely watch out for that when when you watch the documentary. But there's there's this thing in there that it's it, it's it's weird to think that that she died in his house. And he gives this like creepy smirk when when they're talking about her relationship with with Savage. It was it was very, I don't know. It creepy. put me off. Yeah, it was creepy. It put me off. It was just awkward. It was wow. Yeah, it was very weird. Nice. But uh, Matt Morgan pulled along the side a woman who cut him off on the road and stated that she better be glad he wasn't a police officer. What the hell does that mean? After copying his license plate, the woman. Well, this is not correct grammar. After copying his license plate, women reported him as a. Oh, I guess there was a couple of them. I guess that. Yeah. Damn, what a crazy bastard. Damn, yeah. Well, he was. He was pretending to be a police officer. What a crazy bastard. Disco Inferno. <laughs> he was arrested in a gambling sting in Georgia. In Roswell, yeah. Oh, it was a poker game. Yeah, it was ran in the basement. Billy Joe Travis. I'm not familiar with this guy. Who is he? Do you know uh, Billy Joe Travis? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know this guy. During a match. Yeah. He was arrested on air for not paying his child support. On air. Yeah. Damn! William Regal, during his uh, his run in WCW, he was arrested on the plane because he was so intoxicated that he actually urinated on one of the flight attendants. What a fucking crazy! <laughs> That's a fucking rib. Wow. I'm sorry. I thought you were a toilet. <laughs> what a crazy dude, Ric Flair for his uh, road rage. He I remember. Yeah, allegedly he got out of his car, 
grabbed the motorist by the neck and completely kicked the door off of the motorist sport utility vehicle. Uh-huh. Uh, I remember. I remember when this happened and hearing about it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Johnny uh-huh. Cohen, of, uh, public enemy. He was arrested in 96 for getting drunk and stealing one of WCW's production vans. I heard about this. <laughs> I heard about this. That's awesome. Vader and Kuwait. We are. We all know about this one where he slapped the guy for uh, asking yeah. about asking about if wrestling is fake and breaking kayfabe back in the nineties was a no no. So we know the wrestler. Yeah, big show. Working as a giant in WCW was arrested for exposing himself to a hotel employee in Tennessee. What? I can't oh. see Big Show doing this. Oh, and then there's a joke after it. He was later released due to lack of evidence. Oh, <laughs> da da. That is a good joke. I like that. Funny. Funny. That's funny. I'm funny. Girl. Anyway. Big, big seven foot tall man with a two inch penis. <laughs> Heck. All my brains. Yeah, my. All right. New Jack. Oh, my God. Is How many arrests do we have for New Jack? This 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 pertains to the stabbing and so in 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 the ring. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody's seen the, the footage. I've seen Gypsy yeah. uh, Gypsy Joe incident. This is different. Oh, okay, okay. That that was the other one where he stabbed the um. What was that guy? It was just some random fucking dude. It was, and it was in their, but it was their first pay per view. Misery. My doctor caught me across. It was their barely legal pay per view, their first pay per view. So, yeah, this, this is this one. He's he's half a wrestler. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was in a match. He stabbed a wrestler in a match. He stabbed him like thirty some times. Yeah, I know, but this it wasn't an ECW. It wasn't on barely, barely, barely legal. He was Yeah, you're thinking of a different, different show. No, it says stabbed an opponent with a knife during a match. Yeah, I know, but you said you said barely legal. I'm saying it wasn't even, it wasn't an ECW or barely legal. It was some random independent show in like Tennessee. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Actually, the YouTube footage is out there. If you just type in, uh, yeah. And you can see he cuts the guy like 14 times. Wow. Yeah. Well, Buff Bagwell, who he was arrested for uh, assaulting a stage stage hand who asked him to move out of the way so he could pass. That's not very interesting. Uh, Ken Patera. What was that? Ken Patera. There you go. Ken Patera threw a boulder through the windows of a McDonald's for not serving him because it was after hours. Wow. That was uh, <laughs> that, 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 that screaming steroid rage. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and then he later, wow, uh, more steroid rage. He later assaulted the police officer that was sent to arrest him, which landed him two years in jail. What a crazy dude. Yeah. Uh, Ubuntu Guerrero. While in WWE, he was arrested at a hotel after an incident where he was discovered naked and screaming in a hallway high on PCP and then attacked police officers who had arrived to detain him. Wow, PCP is nothing to fuck with. Crazy man. Oh, shit. That is a bad picture of Scott Hall if I've seen any. You want to take over the rest of them? Stuff pretty much done. Let's see. No, go ahead, man. You're doing great. All right. Scott Hall. Hey, yo. Legal. Legal and law trouble. Scott Hall was arrested in 2012 for allegedly beating his girlfriend while being a fucking drunk state of mind. He denied the charges. Oh, man. Nick Gage. Are you familiar with Nick Gage? Boxman. Yep. I'm here. Are you are you uh, are you familiar with Nick Cage? I did. I do remember hearing this story. Um, I am not very familiar with him. I think he, if I'm not mistaken, he was a 
pro wrestling syndicated guy, is that right? No, he's actually a CZW. Okay, I'm sorry. I knew it was one of the indies, um, but I remember when this story came out not okay. long ago. One of those like ultra violent, crazy ass dudes. Um, he's at, he actually just got out of jail, and he's coming back at a tournament of death. So I'll be there. So I'll see this guy debut back. Nice. But uh, I don't I don't know if you can say nice, but uh, yeah, he <laughs> robbed a bank in New Jersey. Yep. So, it says a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, it says okay. a lot. Let's see. Are you a fan of uh, Blackjack Mulligan? I'm not too familiar. I mean, I know who he is. I've seen matches, but I never really care for Yeah, him. a lot of your stuff is um, way before my time, so I really haven't caught up on a lot of it. Yeah, definitely before my time. Yeah. Blackjack Mulligan and his son were arrested for counterfeiting charges and served jail time for it. Counterfeiting <laughs> charges and what? Money? Counterfeiting is usually money. Yeah. Although back then that could have been a friggin' fake check or not a fake check but a bounce check or something, so who knows. Yeah. Kurt Angle. Oh, God, how many? Of course, DWI. Not very interesting. Yep. No, we all knew about that. J Snake, crack, crack, right? Drug yeah. problems, cocaine. Cocaine, yeah. crack, all that, all that terrible stuff that he was uh, addicted to, all the demons in his life. Matt Hardy, two, 2014. Uh, yeah, with this we actually remember this. This was a couple months ago. He was arrested this for a uh, yeah domestic fight between him and a. Uh, Rebby Sky that resulted yep. in a bloody and, and battered and scratched up Matt Hardy. Yep, and they've been married since. So. Right. Right. So and the next one we we all know about too. Jeff Hardy and his uh his little drug raid that uh, got him arrested for a lot of crap. It's kind of he's still dealing with that actually. It's actually one of the reasons he can't go other state, other uh, countries right now. So, yeah, Jeff Hardy, man, trafficking yeah. drugs. Yeah, he, he, they found a ton of stuff in his house, man. Like what? Uh, let's see. Two hundred and sixty. <coughs> excuse me. Hold on. <coughs> Let me take a, <coughs> a swig here. Two hundred and sixty-two Vicodins. One hundred and eighty somas. Five hundred and fifty-five milliliters of anabolic steroids. Cocaine powder. Drug paraphernalia. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I know the um, I know the pit bulls. Are you are you uh, familiar with the pit bulls from ECW? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I know they were uh, they were dealing steroids in uh in, in Philly for a long time and they got busted. So wow. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if that made it. I, don't, I doubt it made it this this list. I doubt it. On Dick Slater. Oh, dirty Dick Slater. Punched his ex girlfriend in the back of the head and stabbed her with a butcher knife? Yeah, never use a butcher knife. Always use like a steak knife or a paring knife is good. Um, oh, sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's brutal. <laughs> I was joking, Shaheen. No, I'm 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 just saying what the guy did, but yeah, that's brutal. Also, I mean, I know you're joking, man. Don't I? Have, I know you're not gonna sell. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what's brutal. The next fucking guy, which uh, yeah, ultimate dickhead in 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 wrestling. So fuck this guy, um, Jose Gonzalez Invader. Um, yeah, the murder of uh, the late great 
Bruiser Brody, man. One of, one of the great uh, hardcore guys. Mm hmm. The innovator. Yeah. What about uh, Bruiser Brody, were, were, you, were you a big fan? I mean, he's, he's, he's more around your time. I mean, I, I, I caught up with his uh, work, but. Um, it was, it was a little bit before my time, but I've gone back and looked at some of it just because I've, uh, I've heard so much about him. He was awesome, man. He was definitely ahead of his time. I, I think it would be a good way to, to uh, put him. He was ahead of his time. Uh, very good. Good in the room. I, 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 he was amazing. He was amazing for back then especially. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this guy uh, decided to take him from all of us. Yeah, I got a, I got a bunch of uh, DVDs from, from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, matches. I probably have like 200 fucking Bruce Brody matches, half of them with uh, Abdul the Butcher, of course. But, wow. Definitely, man. Definitely uh, one of the great hardcore guys that was uh, going far too early. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I thought I think he was ahead of his time. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it would have definitely been amazing right now. So, uh yeah. Nice. Austin. Of course, we know what he did with Deborah. Yep. That was the whole Deborah situation in 2002. Yep. Beat his woman. Beat her. God damn it. I said I needed another beer. <laughs> yeah. There you go, man. Sure. That was, that was sure. a weird relationship. Swig a beer for Deborah and her busted eye. <laughs> Man, can you uh, have you have you heard anything any, any shoot interviews? I know you keep up with the shoots more than I do. Has Deborah done anything since since that situation, that incident? Right. No, the last thing I heard about Deborah. Actually, she came on in your head, didn't she? I think she's going to school or something, dude. Yeah, she was going to something for school or something like that. Didn't she do an interview with uh, Jack and all? I think she did, and I think she had said in that interview she was going to school for something. And I want to say criminology, but I'm not 100. percent Man, can you can you imagine her? <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. Southern accent kills me. I always liked Deborah. She was a little rough looking, but she she's. She didn't bother me much. I love her legs, though. Yeah, she had a good body on her, man. Man, hard Don't go Harrison. Who the hell is this guy? Uh, it's this guy right here. Do you know him? From this picture. Well, oh, other than that, from his works. No, I was going to let you talk, and I'll check him out. Yeah. In 2008, hard body Harrison was sentenced to life in prison on account of holding women as prisoners and forcing them into prostitution. What a sick fuck. Let's see if we know this guy. I'll wait on Boxman to get some more, more information. But he was also charged with a conspiracy, aggravated sexual abuse, and witness tampering. He was wanted for hold eight women at total. I don't know. It. Nobody wants to... Let's see, Jim Powers versus Hardbody Harrison. So he was in. Whoa. And this is a WCW match. Yeah, I guess he was. He was with the. He was with the Dub. Yeah, this is a WCW match. It's not that old because it's pretty clear. I'm watching it on YouTube here. Um, I don't know when the match is from. If it's Jim Powers, the latest it could possibly be is probably early 96, maybe. Teddy Long is still kind of fat. <laughs> Does that tell you anything? No. I'm sorry. That was it, man. But yeah, he was definitely in WCW, so we know that. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was it. That was, that was number one. Oh, really? Yeah. That was number one. That was 24 of them. That makes sense. Number one, he was wanted for holding eight women. It looked, from what I read just a minute ago. God damn, dude. Right. Oh, one, one last one, quickly. Just, just until so we go till twelve. Get our three hours. Um, damn, we did six hours this week. That's a lot. 
Yeah, cool. I'll, I, I got two funny promos we can play. Cool. Uh, maybe maybe uh, Tuesday we'll do like a shorter uh, shorter show and get some sleep. So yeah, we can do that. Give them six hours this week, so we'll let you guys listen to these and catch up to these before we give you any uh, new content. There you go. Yeah. Got one more. Top 10 greatest wrestlers ever. Which uh, I'm sure I'm going to hate this. So, because John Cena is the cover, so I already know where this. Is. <laughs> I already know where this is headed. Who's that motherfucker? Uh, I know where this is headed. Oh yeah, I- I'll bet he's low. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh. I, don't know. I don't even know how to get on here and check out the rankings. Can you figure it out? I don't see it. Hold on, hold on. let me get in here. I just posted it up. Mm-hmm. I don't see any button to go on to the next slide. Uh, it's right in the picture. Oh, shit, I see it now. Yeah, I just hit the picture. Uh, let's see. John Cena luckily is number 10, Shaheen. Okay. Well, Does that make you happy at all? Not really. He shouldn't. He doesn't belong in here at all. But I know, but... Shaheen, you gotta just go with the flow sometimes, my friend. Dude, number ten is Cena, and number nine is the Tate is Undertaker. I mean, yeah. yeah, let's see. Uh, l- let's give it a chance. All number right, nine is Undertaker. What's the next one? Ooh, baby, Death Day. Hoo Um, the Bionic Elbow. I don't know. What's wrong? I don't know if he should be uh, before Taker. Dusty? Yeah. Uh, you got to remember, these articles are all written on someone's opinion. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know he was definitely influential as far as, you know. And besides that, dude, this is a men's fitness article. Calm down. <laughs> True. I mean, True. I don't know anybody could write this, but, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, c- come on. Never- Above Dusty is Triple H? Well, yeah, I mean. Yeah, come on, go fuck yourself. Seriously. Triple H better than this. Do you know where where that scar comes from? That on on, on Dusty's uh belly? Is that a burn scar? I don't know. But I I it looks bad on here. Yeah. Real bad. I don't know what that is. Could be a burn or a could be road rash. It looks like it could be a road rash. Dude, have you ever checked out uh, I Like to Hurt People, the movie? No. You need to check that out. Is it anything like Faces of Death? Because I can't even watch Faces of Death, dude. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's about wrestling. Oh, okay. Then I'll watch that. It's, it's fucking awesome. It's, it's, it's all, uh, it pretty much revolves around the Detroit wrestling scene when uh, the original Sheik was running it. He was, he was the booker. And uh, you see a lot of uh, it's like from like this probably early seventies, and it's uh, you know, it's definitely keeping kayfabe, and it makes these guys look fucking crazy. I mean, when you watch this man, the original Sheik is insane. <laughs> awesome. You see a young Andre the Giant, um, a lot of Dusty Rhodes, a lot of Terry Funk, definitely a lot of original Sheik, um, a lot of blood, uh, a lot of rare, rare. Uh, Detroit wrestling, definitely check that out, man. And I know you know how to get around that stuff, so yeah, you can get your hands on it. Definitely check it out, man. It's really yeah. good. I will. Netflix might even have it. You never know. Yeah, it might. It might. So I will check that out, man. Seven. Number seven, Triple H, and then we got number six, Shawn Michaels. All right. As long as Michaels is ahead of Triple H, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I guess. Number yeah. five. Harley Race, which okay. I'm surprised he's on here because I didn't expect him to be on here. Yeah, but I appreciate him be on, um, being on here. But uh, yeah, and you can't bring number four ahead of him. I'm sorry. I mean, I know The Rock was big, but no, you can no. Well, I, I yeah. you gotta you gotta think about they're they're probably going off the impact that the so that wrestling has. Exactly, what I was about to say. You got to realize how are they judging this article on? I mean, The Rock might have been the best 
sports entertainer, and I'm using my air quotes and because you can't see me, I'm going to tell you. Right. Uh, this, but, you know, hardly using air quotes. So, you know, you know what I mean? It, it, it would all – I don't know. Like I said, this is all opinion. Why am I getting upset when I told you not to get upset? I don't know. God damn it. Shut me the fuck up. Go ahead, man. Good <laughs> uh, number three is Hulk Hogan? Are you kidding me? Uh, I would say I'm kidding you, but I'd be lying because I'm reading the same thing you are, my friend. All right. Well, I'll just go with the flow. Number two is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, hell oh. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. There you go. Give me one more. Oh, hell yeah. There you go. <laughs> Number one. Do we have a drum roll? I haven't got a drum roll. I'll, I'll hold on. Here, you want me to get one real quick? Nah, that's all right. We can get one. I can do it. I can do it really quick. Oh, it's already kind of... It, yeah. No, I, if I stall long enough, I can do it. All right. I can do this shit. I can stall. I'm good at that shit. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's see what I can do. You think I can do it? Let's see. I think I can. Oh, oh I think I... I oh, let's hope it's not a commercial. And I... Oh. There we go. Awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, number one, the greatest wrestler of all time, Woo! Ric Flair. All right. I'm going to agree with that. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just say nothing except I agree, and I agree. Yeah. I'm surprised Bret Hart was not on this. Um, I agree with him not being on it, but I'm not a Bret Hart fan. You're crazy. Um, dude, I never. I've taken so. There, there's two people I take a lot of shit for not not ever liking in my life. I never liked Bret Hart, and I never liked Lex Luger. Yeah, I never liked Luger. I never liked Cena. Um, okay, good. Luger, you're 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 on the Luger boat with me. I mean, I can't say I hated him, but I just I, he was one of those guys. Was, well, whatever. I hated him. And honestly, I think a lot of that has to do with my dad. My dad would look at Lex Luger on the screen and just go, this guy looks like the biggest asshole I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he did. Absolutely yeah. did. And that's what my dad would always say about him. And I always said, man, you know, I, and I was like, you know, six years old at this point. <laughs> so, was like, yeah. But my dad always said he just he looks like the biggest prick I've ever seen in my life, and from what people say, he kind of was back then. So, not much of a lie. Yeah. Well, let's. Uh, I know we're gonna stretch this out five more minutes. On the spot, you know, we always put you on the spot. Yeah. On the spot. Give me your top ten. Let's let's take a couple minutes. Let's try to brainstorm. Let's come up with a with a top ten that we can kind of agree on. Doesn't really have to be in order at all. Just uh, top ten. All right, I would put. All right, let's see here. I'd put Warrior on my top ten. Absolutely. Flair. Absolutely. Jake the Snake. I would as well. Yeah. Steamboat is probably my top number one. I wouldn't put him up there, but that's fine. I'd. I love Steamboat to me was one of the greatest. Um, well, let's let's let me let me write this down so we can make sure we get ten. I'm, I'm on four. I I I I I'm I'm going on my fingers here. All right, all right. You go you go with cool. that, and I'll get I'll get this going here. All right. Um, oh man, because I got tag teams on here too, man. I can't do that. I can't do tag teams. I'm not allowed. Yeah, you can do tag teams. Why not? Was that would that count as two or one? No, just one. Oh, okay. Road Warriors are up there with me, man. Well, Rocky. you know, what? You know should, should we put them up there? I don't know. No, let's let no, because that'll <sighs> that'll leave too little room for a uh, for single single talent. All right. So where was I? Unless we do like a top twenty, then we can probably put tag teams. Well, we could just do tag teams and do a top ten of those. God damn it. Anyway. Uh -huh. 
Where was I? Uh, Flare, Snake, uh, Warrior, and um, Steamboat. Flare, Snake, Steamboat. Um, um, who am I thinking? God damn it. I loved old Sting back in the day. I, I really did. I thought he was awesome back in the day. Um, oh my god, my brain right now is just flying through rosters of wrestling. Man, I, like I just I don't I don't know. What are we judging off of? Just your favorites? Just just personal oh. favorites? You know what? Honestly, dude, it, it really I could put those five in my like main top top favorites and leave it at that. I mean, any other people I say are just going to be honorable mentions, but honestly, those five right there are my top, especially the Steamboat, especially Flair, especially Jake the Snake, but Steamboat is my top favorite. I, I just, I never cared for Lex. I never cared for Bret Hart. I thought his promos sucked. Everyone, his promos were great. Why? Well, in 97, they were good. Because eh, he talked like this in most of his promos. I can beat you because I am the best there was, the best there ever will be. No. That's Cena that you're doing now. No. <laughs> you're right. I'm sorry. I just, I really think, I, I never liked him. Even Kevin in the chat room was mad at me. He said I'm dead to him now because I don't like I, Bret Hart. I, I like Bret Hart, man. Then that's fine. I got no problem with anyone liking any wrestler I don't like. I had no problem with it. I just never gave a shit. I mean, if you want to keep going with top ten, believe it or not, you can call me crazy. I'd put Shane McMahon up there in my top ten, too. Shane McMahon? I swear to God, after the crazy shit oh, he did, I loved God Shane. Damn it, man. You're out of your fucking mind. I mean, he might be number ten to God me. God damn it. Come on, dude. Seriously, dude. I'd, I'd put Stone Cold in there. I would put The Rock up in that. I would put... Um, <laughs> Excuse me. No way you can put Shane McMahon in your top. I would, man, dude. I'm. I, I. I. And another thing, I get a lot of shit for. I thought Shane was. Was he good? I mean, but he look. The guy took a lot of look. Did he do anything Mick Foley didn't do? Uh, yeah. Was Mick Foley a great wrestler, or was Mick Foley a great bump taker? He was well, a great bump taker, but he was also. A Couple great gimmicks and characters. Okay. And also well, great at doing promos. Like one of the best at doing promos. See, I always liked Shane's promos, and I always liked when Shane would get in the ring. He would always do something to entertain me. And if we're looking at sports entertainment, he would be up there in my top ten. Nah. Hey. I wouldn't even put him in my top hundred, probably. See, that's what this is all about. Everybody can like who what they like for for reasons, but. Absolutely, man. Because absolutely, and I, I, yeah, and I would put Kurt Angle up there, so that would be nine. And goddamn, I got one more. God, I probably missed so many. Shawn Michaels, Foley. You could put Michaels in my list. I, I, I always like Shawn Michaels. Yeah, Michaels. I, I, th I thought I mentioned him, but I didn't. Did you mentioned Rock. I did. I said Stone Cold and Rock would definitely be in there. See, like I, the, the, I know I brought up this list, but that's what I hate about doing these lists because it's it's all it's almost like you have to put, you know, those few guys in there. Yeah, Cena's my number eleven. Like, like Cena and Rock, like I mean, not Cena, uh, <laughs> guys like Austin and Rock, like they have to be like one and two, right? Austin has to be, but man. <laughs> Now Shane McMahon, but not Lex Luger. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Dude, I mean, he has a point. I mean, are you fucking kidding me, man? I mean, Shane. No, I'm not. Shane oh, McMahon to me was almost the same as Mick Foley. Every time he got in the ring, he took a big bump. Every time Foley got in the ring, he took a big bump. I mean, so, I don't know. I don't I, know. I understand where this stems from. I understand the roots of where your logic uh, to the. But it just it. It baffles my mind. It's it's still it's it's still out there. Look, I said he would be the number ten on the list. He would be the last guy. 
<laughs> Ricky Steamboat being my first guy, everyone else just sort of falls in the list between. But I don't know. I'm sorry. I I I I, I thought to me Shane was entertaining. Anytime he walked out there, right now, if Shane's music started playing, I'd mark out. I'd love it. I'll tell you what. We should we should do this every week. We do a different uh, top ten. That way we can discuss this. This is this is good. Quit put me on the spot, man. I'm gonna have to give me some time. All right, that's fine. I'll maybe. I'll, I'll, we'll, I'll, we'll, you know what? Up. We'll we'll get Facebook involved and kind of go from there. Well. As far as my list, um, yeah, let's hear your list, smarty pants. I mean, like guys, like, like I, I love guys like like Sabu and Abdul the Butcher and those guys, but I feel like I can't put them on there because they they have no promo, you know. So that's why I hate kind of doing these lists because. But but you can, but you see, well, you can. But again, it, 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 the lists are you have to be very specific. You have to do it on this this era, this time. You know what I mean? You have to be specific about your lists. All right. Well, I guess I guess. All right. Well, I guess this list isn't like an overall wrestler. It's just who is your favorite to kind of watch. Maybe not necessarily who's like the, you know. Well, then I pretty much name mine. All right. Well, that's fine. Well, I'll go ahead and put a uh, Ultimate Warrior. That's one. Jake the Snake Roberts. There you go. We agree. Um, Undertaker. Ooh, good one. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Cactus Jack. Okay. That's four. Bret Hart. That's five. Uh, Ric Flair. That's six. Uh, Rock and Austin. Seven and eight. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I would have to put Shawn Michaels on there. Yeah, he's got to. He's contributed a lot, but... He's never been like one of my favorites, but I definitely appreciate his. his oh his. yeah, yeah. There was no way you couldn't. The guy was amazing in the ring. Uh, he, uh, y y y you just can't take it away from him. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Number last one. Go Shaheen. Last one. Um. You want, you want, you want the drum roll? I'm gonna. No, I don't. I, Cause I don't think it's it's a big enough name. It's gonna be a letdown. Um. No, no disrespect to the guy, but I, I'm I'm going to go ahead and go with Scott Hall, uh, especially Razor Ramon specifically. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. You know what? Scott Hall should should probably should have probably been somewhere on my list. I always like Scott Hall too. You know what's a big surprise though? What? Hulk Hogan did not make neither of our lists. Dude, I was never a huge Hogan fan. Um, a big surprise. Neither did I. No, no Cena and no Tate and no uh, Hogan. That's crazy. No, no Cena for me. Look, Hogan did what he did for the business. I'm not gonna lie. He probably brought the business to to the heights it was back when he was huge. Oh, absolutely. But, but he was never one of my guys that I would want to see all the time. I, I, you know, I, I just never. I, I, you know, if we were doing a list, name some of the you know most influential guys in wrestling. He might be number one with Stone Cold number two, but I don't know, you know, but but as far as what a great wrestler, eh, Hogan to me was what he was. I was never down with the, you know, say your prayers and take your vitamins. Yeah, I hear you, man. Yeah, but uh, that's just me. Man, I'm sorry to everybody. I'm sitting here sniffing in the microphone all night. I'm still sick. Yeah, man. I just realized I'm right in front of the microphone sniffing. <laughs> are you are you in a rush to get out of here? Man, I'm good. You're good. All right. Well, how about we do a, another quick list then? Oh, quick list. Or do you want to play these wonderful, wonderful promos I pulled up that you reminded me of? All right. Well, how about how about we do that? Therefore, we can also take a quick right. break and give our uh, voice boxes a rest. We're talking about Ken Patera. Yep. Ken Patera has one of the worst promos out there that I've ever heard. And I have – there's also another guy who has another one. These are both a minute, some long. And uh, have, you ever, have you ever heard the Jumpin' Jeff Farmer promo? I believe so. Is it, is it from uh, Memphis? Yeah. yeah we're talking about Motley Cruz. 
Yeah, I've seen them. All right. Maybe I don't have to play them then. No, but, play them uh, for other people to hear. All right. Let's hear this wonderful... Let's start with the Jeff Farmer promo. This is... This on YouTube, if you ever want to find it, is called Best Wrestling Promo Ever. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and check this out while we're here. So let's... Uh, while Shaheen's doing whatever, and I'm going to uh, take some swigs of beer. So here we go. Hold on one second. Earlier go. we talked to Jumpin' Jeff Farmer. Let's go now to that interview. Folks, there's Jumpin' Jeff Farmer. Jeff, a while back, what a match you had with Motley. Yep. Probably the hardest match I ever had in my life. <laughs> yep. But I don't like it when things aren't my, going my way. Motley Cruz, you turn the tables on me. You turn the tables in a wrong way. You got me mad now. I've stood around. I've listened to everything you had to say. I did everything necessary. But when you turn around and you backstab me one way or another and you treat, cheat me out of what's rightfully mine, that's when I get angry. Now I'm the one doing the challenging. I'm issuing a challenge to you, Motley Cruz. <laughs> get in the ring with me. This time, I'm going full force. Okay. Jump and Jeff. Does that remind you of Roman Reigns at all? <laughs> no, but thank God for NXT. <laughs> God, that, right, guy gonna... that guy, th that's from IPW um, from a long time ago. How bad is that? <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm posting it right now on THT Podcast at wow, THT Podcast. No uh, Facebook.com slash group slash THT Podcast if you guys want to watch that. Um, that, was I, that. that was horrible and uh, I did hear that on Opie and Anthony a long time ago and I couldn't stop laughing that was that was that was horrible oh, yeah. one night we'll do worst promos ever and we'll play them all we should, we should do different themes we could do that starting, you know, I mean, this is a whole new year. We can start all kinds of new stuff, Shaheen. Yeah, new ventures, man. Yeah. And this one, this next one is called Ken Patera Murders a Promo. <laughs> and he's got Gene, Gene Okerlund with him. So let's hear this one. <laughs> this, is, this is horrible. I've heard it before. Uh, I am. I'm interested. There we go. Come to the point of the Can you hear it? Is completely out of hand. Yep. He gang a henchman on me, his goon squad, King Kong Bundy, King Harley Race, Hercules Hernandez, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Yeah, I've been humiliated before. If I'm so humiliated right now, I'm afraid to turn my back. I don't want the people to see what happened to me. They whip me like a dirty yard dog. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Weasel, and the goon squad. I can take pain... I can recover it, recover. I can recuperate. Well, I'm beyond that. I am so upset at the, the actions that are going on in the World Wrestling Federation, especially from your so-called family. But it's just it's a matter of time. Like I said before, and I said it to you, Mean Gene, I said it to everybody. It's just a matter of time when Camp Patera gets in full gear and runs the World Wrestling Federation or rids the World Wrestling Federation of the likes of you, Weasel, and King Kong, Bundy, Ray, Hercules, Warndorf, all of you. You're all going to go down one by one, and I'm going to make sure of that. For the whipping that you gave me, whip me like a red-headed red stepson. I'm sick and tired of that type of treatment. And when I get ready, when I'm in full gear, <laughs> Keenan, Weasel, whatever you guys want to do, just bring it on because I'm not going anywhere. Yep. Like I say, I'm going to carry these scars for a while, but I do heal, and I heal well. All right, what a beating he took at the hands of the Heenan family. He's strong man, Ken Patera. Now, you got to realize, Gene, Gene Okerlund is looking. I posted this on the uh, Facebook also. Gene is looking away at the end of this interview and looking at Ken Patera's back. That's how embarrassed Gene is to be involved in this. Hey, man, that was I love the goon squad, though. <laughs> goon squad. Yeah, so that is... Uh... <laughs> Iraq. Fucking goon squad. 
That was horrible, though. That was absolutely horrible. I can't believe it. So. By the way, that speaking of Chirac, do you know what Chirac is? What? It's uh, like Chi Town, Chicago. Oh, okay. Um, that's like one of the most fascinating things to me in the world is is Chirac. I just I don't fucking get it. I. Uh, well, have you been to Chicago lately? Absolutely not. I don't want to. No, I haven't been there in a long, long time. Was it always really that bad? I don't know. I um, I've only been to Michigan, which is when I went to um. I guess I haven't been to Chicago. Yeah, I did once. I did go to Detroit once, but it was a long. I was a kid. It was a long time ago. I said Chicago, not not Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought about it. I've only been to Chicago one time and I was very young. And I it was on a pass through. Yeah. And I can't remember where I was headed, but I used to do um I used to ride horses and do all those shows, so I think one of them was going through to a a show. Man. I can't think back like that right now. (laughs) It is some of the most Craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, we've got um. It's 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 not all right. <laughs> it's actually the opposite of all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. Oh, we're definitely doing this. There is thirty four minutes of bad wrestling promos. That's awesome. Yeah, we will get a few of these, and. Uh, I'll go through and pull some of these and put them in a list, and uh, I'll cut them up, put them in a list, and we'll go through some of these bad wrestling promos and have some fun with them one night. Maybe we'll do that for a Saturday show, too. Do you think it's just a bunch of Roman Reigns promos saying just believe it? (laughs) Well, let's see. This was put on a year ago, so probably not. Uh, It says Shockmaster, featuring Shockmaster, and it's got the Jumpin' Jeff Farmer promo, so we can skip that. So, like I said, I'll I'll cut this up um, into separate ones. But uh, this one's got 35 different videos. We'll have some fun. Yeah. I'll I'll uh, maybe we'll do another Saturday show, and we'll do some themed Saturday shows from now on. Maybe. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Well, I guess Sounds good. we've kind of done enough for the night. Yeah, I guess so. Oop, hold on here. One second. Why you do that? Let me get the plugs out of the way. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. You know, join us on our website, and that is hottagpodcast.weebly.com. You can check us out on Twitter, hot tag. Uh, I'm sorry, THT Podcast. Um, you can join us on YouTube. It's Turnbuckle Corner or THT Wrestling Podcast. You can join us on iTunes as well as Stitcher. Both are the same thing. Uh, THT Wrestling Podcast. And what else do we have? We have Facebook. You can come over there. You can converse with us. There's some good discussions going on 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 Monday nights and other nights. And we're posting all these links so you can check it out. And uh, please go ahead and subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher. Leave a comment. Share it. Um, You know, click like. Like dislike if you don't like it. I don't care. Speak your mind. Just be interactive. But uh, yeah, join us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash groups slash THT podcasts. Yeah. Just join us, people. Leave some fucking reviews. Leave some leave some comments. Like. Dislike. Now. now. Do whatever you want. Right now, right this minute. That's right. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it, man. I got uh, I got nothing else, and uh, there's not much news. Been one of those weeks for wrestling, man. Everybody's just getting back to uh, back to uh, starting the new year. Well, I guess there was oh, quickly before we leave. There was this one thing. I guess uh, Vince McMahon is down on uh, Roman Reigns. Have you heard of this? I did read something like that. Go ahead, man. Well, that surprises me because typically I would think Vince is the one behind uh, Roman Reigns. But uh, 
I guess not. So Triple H wants uh, Roman Reigns to win at the Rumble, and Vince is more more uh, behind. I guess it was what was it Dolph Ziggler and uh, Dean Ambrose. Mm-hmm. So that's really surprising. I didn't I didn't expect that. I think Dean would be the smarter choice. Yeah, Ziggler. As much as I like Ziggler, he's he's not ready. Ex- exactly. Um, Especially at this type of at this type of caliber, you know, like a WrestleMania. Nah. Especially with the the higher ups in WWE thinking that Ziggler's already injury prone. Here's Dean Ambrose, a guy who I don't think if even if he was injured, he would say anything. Um, he'd somehow sneak by it. I don't know why, but I think that's the kind of guy he would be. I think Dean Ambrose is just a better way to go. I mean, I would rather see Dean Ambrose. Trust me, I'd rather see anybody than Reigns win this motherfucker, dude. Yeah. I don't I don't want to see him win. I wouldn't care if Batista came back and won. Um, Road Warrior Animal, he responded to, to the Ascension. Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and talk about that. Let me see what he said. I I don't even think it was worth mentioning that. It was, you know what? It, it it was so, it was classless. It was like they're never gonna be. First of all, they're never gonna get a match with the Road Warriors. So why even bring them up as of as at all? You know, just because you're getting compared to them. Doesn't you know? It doesn't mean you have to bring them up and bring it. You know, let's go ahead and just bring it to the forefront. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's the writers. You know. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't bring it to the forefront. Maybe you shouldn't make fun of it, man. Yeah, I, I just you know what? It, did it anger me? No. Did I find it tasteless, classless, and pointless? Yes, all three. Right. All th- so, whatever. But yeah, uh, Animal wasn't happy either, as you probably read. You can go ahead and read the tweet if you got it. Yeah, the idiots in charge make the call. Everyone knows how stupid it is to copy icons, yet they still do it. Do it in a mi- mocking fashion to get heat, I understand. Do it in a disrespectful way. Well, that's another issue that's low and has no place in the business. Jesus, that is a fucking long-ass runoff sentence. Yeah, you know what? That's what it was. Low. It was dirty. It was low. I agree. I agree with Animal. I love... I. I you're not going to get me not to agree with the guy. I fucking love the Road Warriors. Where does it end? And I usually are, just are, playing when I comment. But this one is a shoot. I believe they should have had me, Animal, find a team. For some undetected odd reason, they don't do it. They missed the boat with the Ascension, and they missed it when my brother John was in the ring. Both great times to bring me in, and they missed it. Wouldn't um, it be great to have him as a have animal as their manager? Absolutely, but is 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 English his uh, second language? No, I think um, autocorrect was his second language on that one. Are are wrestlers typically like? Is this like a stereotype that they're? I don't want to say uneducated, but I think like, they're. Just I don't want to say illiterate, but yeah. you get what I'm saying. I'm gonna just say that they're probably a lot of them are just on their phone, and that goddamn autocorrect can be a bitch. <laughs> Sometimes, but I've, but I've heard so many different stories about wrestlers, like, like for for instance, like Test, like he, he was basically illiterate. Really? Yeah, you couldn't. He really couldn't write. Huh? Read, I think. I like Test. Yeah. I did. I thought he was pretty damn good. And that's kind of sad, man. I've I've found this to be like a pattern tonight. For <laughs> everything we talk about is pretty much dead wrestlers. I found myself saying "God may rest his soul" like twenty times tonight. So another one. Yeah, that's more for you to say than me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm not the kind of guy that says that. Um. But yeah, I um I don't know, man. But uh, animals, right? They had it. They should have probably brought him in to be a manager. I know a while back he said something weird about steroids that you guys didn't like. But 
Bringing him in as their manager, why would it hurt? Bring him in now. Bring him in now. Well, it's kind of weird to bring him in now. It would be weird, but it would be a. I mean, the, the guy would get a huge pop. I don't know. But would he? I mean, yeah, yeah, he would. You want to get this team over? Do it. But <laughs> yeah, right now it would be weird. Now, now you'd have to get Animal in there to kick both their asses, which you could probably still do. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. So, I, don't know. I, I just, I mean, oh, uh, uh, what a joke. What a fucking bullshit line, man. It was bullshit. They, they, and they're not going to get heat. They're going to get hated for it. They are. They already have. <laughs> you don't take a team you that a lot of people respect that are legends in this business. You've put out a DVD on these guys showing what legends that they were in the business, and then these two these two fucking rookies come in and fucking fuck with them? Hell no. I wish Animal would come back from the dead and kick the fuck out of that bitch. Both of them. I actually got some more news here with this damn advertisement. It's making me wait 25 seconds. God, I hate this. Um, Damn the internet! I know, man. All these adver don't they? I mean, what kind of what kind of business tactic is this to like annoy your potential, you know, customer by just killing them with advertisement? Like, can you not shut it off? I already did. I'm just I'm just trying to make a point here. Like, for instance, like let's say let's say you were potentially going to be buying something that you see as an advertisement on one of these websites, right? Yeah. Just by you making me watch something that I don't want to watch at this moment for like 25 seconds, even though I probably can just turn it off in like 7 seconds or whatever the average estimate time is before you can shut it off, it, that just makes me not want to just buy it at that moment. It's just like, oh, fuck you. Why are you doing this? <laughs> this is the internet. This uh, this isn't TV. Just put it on the side somewhere or something, you know? Mm. Fucking annoying. But then, like, a couple of days later, you're sitting there and you're thinking and you're like, man, that company that popped up on the internet might actually work. I, I never try. Anything that pops up, I just think it's shady, so I just don't trust it. <laughs> you're so probably I, smarter I, than I never. I never click on any, like, advertisement on websites or anything. I just don't click on shit. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, I just I just think it's all scams. But but uh, Chris Jericho made a surprise appearance tonight. Who gives a shit? Do you? Uh, and uh, at a at a what house show? Uh, yeah. Um, he oops. said he's going to be doing a bunch of house shows only, not TV. I mean, I, I don't even care if he is here or, or not. I guess I'm guessing he's going to be at, at the Rumble. Which uh, surprise entrant? Dude, I I hate their fucking. You know, they always take the cheap way out. You know, the they same old, same old fucking people. Chris Jericho, Van Dam. I guarantee you, these same guys are going to be back. We're going to get Orton. We're going to get Van Dam. We're gonna get fucking you know Ziggler and Rowan and all those guys coming back, and Jericho now. So not not very exciting. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do with all three of those guys. It's so funny, dude. Everybody posting all the pictures of them, how they like signed with ROH and shit. Everyone's buying into it. God damn, what a bunch of marks. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I posted some of that. It's, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, it is fucking hilarious. These people actually think that it, that they would do it. Meanwhile, if WWE let them actually go over to like ROH and something, holy shit, would that be a fucking story and a half? Yeah, it would be awesome, but they would never do it. No, but it would be fucking badass. It would be badass. I mean, this, that's that's why I like companies like TNA because they're they're willing to do stuff like that, which is cool. Like like similar to AJ kind of. Yeah, but then AJ came back and left the left the company. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they yeah, they. I mean, I'm not saying. <laughs> TNA had a good opportunity executed, there. Executed just like TNA, because of course they had they had the whole roster pretty much, you know, been taken out by by AJ Styles before he lost. So. Yeah, we don't need to get all into that again. Gave an air blowjob to Hulk Hogan before he lost. <laughs> That's awesome. That was pretty awesome. 
Yeah. Mick Foley said he, he's going to be a, he's going to stay away from social media, which I'm going to go ahead and say thank you, Mr. Foley. Yeah. Um, clearly, I put you in my top ten. You're definitely one of my favorites. Not not dude love, not the weird mankind with a sock and all that bullshit, like the Cactus Jack, you know, <laughs> the, the regular mankind, all that good stuff. But thank you for staying away from social media because. I'm tired of the Christmas talk. Christmas is done. I don't want to t hear you talk about Christmas in February. Don't want to hear you talk about Christmas in May. It's mm -hmm. fucking weird, dude. No one does this. Don't you find that creepy? Like, Christmas all year round? Yeah, I do. It's fucking weird, man. It is pretty weird. It's weird. It is. I agree. AJ Lee, apparently not pregnant. What a shocker. Oh, you mean Meltzer was wrong? As usual. Ugh, please. Talk about who gives a fuck. Backstage news on who is scripting the promos for Roman Reigns. I bet you would yeah. like to have that answer, wouldn't you? I would say McMahon is. TNA returning to the impact zone? I hope not. Oh, God, don't even tell me. Well... No, dude. Manhattan Center, travel around in the fucking couple hot towns that you can. They don't... Dude, the, I, the Impact Zone was a dead house. It was a fucking ghost town. Yeah, but they've been gone for a, about a year and a half now. I don't know. It, it might not hurt them right now to do it. I would... It, it, dude, the main problem is they weren't fans. They weren't wrestling fans. I know. It was kind of like the fucking... Um, NXT audience, bunch of fucking sheep that did what that just you know. Not even that. I mean, the NXT audience is actually the exact opposite of of the Impact Zone. This NXT audience is like, yeah, they are sheep, but clearly you can tell the wrestling fans. But with TNA, it's like, okay, you're in the middle of this. Where is it at? It's it's what is it at? Universal Studios or something? Yeah, even Mick Foley said some of the problem was when you know when it was really hot, they would have people just coming in to get out of the heat. Okay, perfect. Uh, I, I didn't hear that, but that's that's crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. Even Foley, said it. please don't go back there. But yeah, I, that's what I was saying. It's like it's like an attraction. So people, I was gonna say just random people probably just go there just to check it out, and you know, they're probably just sitting on their hands. But yeah, I'd, I'd much rather. I'd prefer if they just stay in the Manhattan Center and, you know, do shows here and there, and that's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We'll see what happens. I, I prefer I prefer them not to go back, but if they do, we'll see what happens. WWE may be uh, partnering up with a popular MMA apparel company. Yeah, I heard they might be going with Tap Out. That's weird. Well, I mean, Jerry Lawler's shirts look like them anyway. What's the difference? Yeah, but I thought Vince like hated like anything MMA re related. Oh yeah, of course he does. Unless he can make money on it, and then he's not gonna say no. It's not gonna happen. Backstage talk on Bray Wyatt and Undertaker. Do you think that's gonna happen? Would you Would you be excited for that? Because I actually I would be excited for that. I want to see that. I'd like it. I'd like to see it. I actually want to see that. Before Undertaker retires, that's that's one match I'd like to see. Yeah, I would other yeah. than Sting and, and and Taker. And no, I don't I don't give a fuck about John Cena and Taker. You can like that. I don't want to see that. I don't care. <laughs> exactly. You know, and I know I'm going to get crucified for that. Oh, it's one of those dream matches. Yeah, I mean, I don't, they faced each other, but you know, on that platform. But uh, they they need to just face each other at a WrestleMania. It's well deserved. I don't care, dude. I don't. I don't want to see it. <laughs> you can watch it. You can fantasize about it and play your 2K15 and you know create your own fantasy fucking WrestleMania 35. There you go. Tell him, Shaheen. Tell him. There you go. I well, I kind of just told him. Okay, you're right. Shit. But uh, yeah. Hold on one second. 
people were shocked that uh, Bray Wyatt defeated Dean Ambrose clean, and I guess it's it's because they're building it up for uh, Undertaker. But uh, I don't know if I believe this because I, I personally don't think Taker's coming back. Um, if he didn't, I'd be fine with it. I don't care. After the streak's broken, it's kind of a dude. He'd left on a, on a terrible note. <laughs> Not really. I was still a good match. No, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. I mean, you gotta remember, Brock was fucking had a concussion within like a minute of the match. It wasn't. It wasn't Brock. It was Taker. Taker, you're right. Taker had a concussion within like a minute of the match. So that does that doesn't that's doesn't make it a good match though. I mean, it's an excuse for it being a bad match, but it certainly was a bad match. I can't. I can't. I can't say it was a good match. I didn't mind it. I thought it was fine. I, mean, I, I didn't mind it, but it wasn't a good match, though. Yeah, it was fine. I, didn't mind it. I mean, I, that's that's another... I don't know, man. It's, hard. it's tough, because it's like I know he knows it wasn't a good match. Well, I'm sure probably, he does. Yeah, you know, I'm sure he probably doesn't want to go out like that. But then again, it's like it's kind of weird to come back. I hate to say awkward again, but it is kind of awkward to come back from, from being defeated. You know, after after losing your streak and then face like Bray Wyatt. Yeah, it would kind of make him seem. It's like minuscule. It's on a small level, you know. I know, like any, I don't have much of a problem with it. Yeah. I'd I'd be interested to see it, but I don't know, man. We still got a little bit of time. We'll see what happens, my man. And we pretty much have a bunch of spoilers that I probably don't want to get into. No, it's a bunch of TNA spoilers for like the next two or three weeks. I don't want to get into those. I don't. I don't. I try my best to stay away from those. Um, well, I wasn't talking. They, they have a bunch of uh, like main event spoilers for whoever the fuck wants to read that. I certainly am not clicking on that because why would I? Oh, who the fuck? Yeah, they'll tell you. You can hear them anyway, so who cares? Exactly. Oh man, TNA returning to the impacts, and I keep seeing this appear. Please stop. Yeah, please. Don't go back. Please stop. Please stop doing this. You're, you're gonna. It's suicide. It pretty much. Well, I don't know about that, but yeah, it's not a good idea. It, it is suicide, man. Because it's, it's you. What you're giving off on the, that reaction that you're giving off on, on on my television set is the type of energy that you're putting into my body and, and my mind, so if, if the fucking crowd is dead, I'm going to probably be dead for the match. Yeah, I know what you're saying, man. You have a bunch of non-wrestling fans, a bunch of, you know, fucking little kids and old grandmas in there that are there for, you know, Jurassic Park or whatever. They, they don't give a shit, dude. <laughs> you know? I guess we'll just see what happens. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to find out. Let's hope they don't go back there, though. We need we need more people like uh, Vladimir the super fan. <laughs> He's back at TNA, man. That's awesome. Oh god, that's well, unbelievable, man. That's crazy. That guy's been around for God knows how long. Like, was, uh, that's crazy. I did see Sam Roberts front row at the uh, at the live show. Uh, TNA? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did see him front row. Right around the end of the show, I saw it. Right when uh, Lashley and Rude were out there. Daniel Bryan on possibly facing Brock. I'd like to see it, man. I don't know why. I just would. I could see it happening. Yeah, I want to see that. Man. I, I, yeah, I definitely want to see it. Mm -hmm. It'd be kind of like the... Uh, I don't know. It's kind of a it's kind of a Rocky Four story, you know. You got to chop the big man down, and I don't know. It could be a nice, nice, uh, nice little story to tell. Daniel Bryan used to squat more than four hundred pounds. Damn, a lot. And apparently, he he claims he's getting better. The keyword better, you know, he's he's not fine. I don't. Think, I don't. Think, he's not medically cleared, is he? It's just yeah. worse. No, he's cleared. He's supposed to be back this week, I think. Really? Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to be back on SmackDown. I guess he already wrestled, I guess, right? I think so, or it's this week, one of the two. But oh, yeah. it's coming up? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
He is ready, my man. So. All right, man. Well, let's right. get the hell out of here, man. We're almost going on four hours. That's too yeah. far. We've done the plugs. I guess we can just end this motherfucker, right? There we go, man. Let's just end this bastard right now. Cut its head off. We will see you guys Tuesday. 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 We will make sure we see you. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful Sunday. Pack your ass, my good man. Time to kick back, take your biz, and smoke some weed.